crashes, thankfully with all riders walking away. And simply some of the best racing and riding skill ever witnessed in one evening. America's Greg Hancock, Denmark's Nikki Pedersen, Sweden's Frederik Lindgren all played their part, along with Poland's Piotr Pawlitski, in reaching the semi-finals. But it was home rider Bartosz Smarslik that provided the fans with the best chance of a homegrown victory. The Stahl Gorzhov rider would join Jason Doyle, Ty Woffenden and Chris Holder in the final. And for the talented young Paul, the fairy story the fans had come to witness would not end happily. Off gate one in red, Jason Doyle, along with Britain's Ty Woofen and in blue, would fight lap after lap for the lead until the final corner of the last lap when the Australian overtook the current world champion to take the chequered flag, ending a dramatic night of racing. Like I said, I wanted to be in the top eight when I first started the year, and uh, at the moment it's going good, but uh, like I keep saying, it, you never know what's around the corner, and I just want to keep pushing, and... Uh, we, we can see what happens uh, in, the, in the next couple of rounds, but I just want to be injury-free and uh, hopefully make it to Melbourne and, and be in, in contention still. Despite not making the final in Gorzhov, Greg Hancock still leads the championship by seven points. Significantly, Jason Doyle, with 87 points, now moves into second place, just one point ahead of Ty Woffenden on 86. Chris Holder is fourth, followed by Smarschlik, Janowski, Limbach and Pavlitsky in eighth. You know, it's a few rounds to go and, you know, the points are still quite a bit of a gap there. So you need to sort of pull out a big, uh, a big score in the next few if you can. And, um, yeah, just keep chasing the boys in front. The series now travels across the border to Germany and Tetero. The small town, which is 200 kilometres north from the capital, Berlin, has a population of nearly 10,000 people and is holding a round of the FIM Speedway World Championship for the first time. The Speedway track is part of a motor racing complex, which is also home to one of the world's leading grass racing long tracks. But for our Warriors of Shale, this weekend their focus will be firmly on the job of getting to grips with this new venue, its 314-metre Speedway track and bike setup. Tricky track, a difficult track, uh, but I enjoyed it. It's a little bit tricky, I'm, I'm not quite sure which is the, the fastest route around it. You can get your bike going, make some starts, it'll be beautiful. This is, it's a beautiful setting and I think it's a cool little racetrack too, what they've done and uh, you know, the history and the, the, uh, the, the background of this place is, is massive. So it's gonna be a massive turnout and uh, it's probably still good for the sport. Hi there, welcome along to Tetero in Germany. It's the German FIM Speedway Grand Prix from the Bergring Arena in Tetero. The first ever time that the Grand Prix series has been to this venue. Uh, very much looking forward to a terrific night of Speedway. It's a packed house here as well. You can see here uh, from every possible vantage point, they are going to try and get a view of the action. And the man alongside me tonight here on commentary is a man who knows this place well. Kelvin Tatum, MBE, former England World World Cup winner and also a bit of a legend in this part of the world, Kelvin, because it's on the big grass track just at the back of this speedway circuit. You have fond memories of this place. Indeed I do, and uh, it's a privilege to come back here. And uh, yesterday, just sort of a bit of nostalgia, remembering about uh, all the exciting moments on the Burgling, which is 1.8 k's round. But uh, tonight, with riders coming out on the track, it's uh, the first opportunity to see the Grand Prix men coming out to do their business. And as you just said, Nigel, it's a fabulous turnout. It's been a gorgeous weather since we arrived in Berlin yesterday. And again today, it's been uh, a fabulous, uh, fabulous weather. Uh, they've had to put an awful lot of water on the track, but the sun is now fortunately that just gone down behind the trees behind the stadium. So we are now in shade, so conditions should be pretty much ideal. Yep, very much so. And the world title race right now, as you saw at the top of the show, Greg Hancock on 94 points, but Jason Doyle very much a man on the move. He's not in the first race of the night. The first race, though, does see the wild card from Germany, and they are going to raise the roof if he can make the start here in heat number one. The FIM German Speedway Grand Prix is on the way. Riders up at tape, and we're ready to go racing. Here we go then, the German wildcard, Martin Smolinski off the inside. Then it's Peter Killerman, the Dane. Matt Sienowski goes off for gate in white. Antonio Limbach is off the outside in yellow. Kelvin Tatum, MBE, alongside me, an England World Cup winner as well. And a man who has won several grass track titles on the main Berg ring behind this speedway circuit. Fond memories indeed, and, uh, well, I'm going to embarrass him now. Bit of a legend in this part of the world, Kel. Thanks, Nigel. Yep, great to be back at this part of the world. And 
Uh, delighted to see that we've got a Grand Prix here. Fabulous turnout, superb weather that we've enjoyed in the two days we've been here. Track is a little different than we normally encounter. Will be a different challenge for riders tonight. It's flat. Gating will be at a premium. Quite possibly the inside gates will be a bigger party. Here we go. He's the on the outside going into that first turn. Smolinski, can he get there? He's going to try to dive on the inside and he waits on one wheel and Smolinski has the lead. The German has the early advantage here. Peter Kilman is in second place right now and they're all pushing up the third with Yanovsky trying hard to get the better of oh. Lindbergh. Brilliant, Yanovsky just charged up the inside again in the third place. The inside gate, well, he didn't make the start, Mr. Smolinski. It was Peter Kilderman that dropped the clutch first, but round that first corner, the inside right, working a sweep. Massive German following here for the German out in front. They will be delighted with this result from Smolinski in heat number one. Well, no wonder the German flags are flying high down the back straight, and uh, they're flat now. Smolinski, a winner of the New Zealand Grand Prix two years ago. The flag's flying down the back straight, and Martin Smolinski is flying as well. The German wild card in his home country takes victory. It's a dream start for Martin Smolinski here in Tetelo. What a ride from Smolinski. He delights the home crowd. Of course, he is a Grand Prix winner, won in New Zealand back in 2014 when he was part of the series then. Hasn't been since 2014, but crikey, he's enjoyed that. He's going to celebrate in style. They love him here. He really is quite a character. Comes out in heat number one, delights the home crowd. A terrific start for him. Well, he's a showman, isn't he? Martin yep. Smolinski. Wherever he's been, he's delighted fans at whatever club he's been with in the UK as well. Smolinski, Kilderman, and then Janowski with Lindback at the back. And again, classic case there where Antonio Lindback in the thick of the action and gets very little for his reward. Yeah. I, think, I think for his efforts, really, I think he's been very unlucky this year. But what can we say about Smolinski? He's an interesting character, he but is. a very good rider. He is indeed. And uh, Peter, uh, Peter Kilderman actually made a smashing start there. But if you move off the inside line, then you're going to pay the price. And that's exactly what happened because Smolinski remained calm. Again, the tapes are up and they go charging towards the first corner. And Smolinski doesn't really really get a great start but the inside run on this flat surface sandy material works a treat fires himself to the front Lim back in the thick of the action Janowski coming charging through into third place and after the first lap there we see the move from the Polish man but uh, it's all about the German he was out in front he's got three points it has to be said as well um, this is the closest in um, 20 years of uh, sports broadcasting that I've actually been to the riders. Me too. We're right over the start-finish line in our commentary position here, just in front of the start line, standing over the riders. In fact, I, I do them. believe, you know, if they go <laughs> wide celebrating, we can give them a high five at the end of a race. That's Absolutely. how close we are. Fabulous position. <laughs> and we have the top two in the current world standings over the start-finish line here now in the middle two gate positions. Heat number two it is. And off the inside, Piotr Pavlitsky, the pole. He's been a very good addition to the Grand Prix scene this year. Jason Doyle, a man in form, no doubt. His last four Grand Prix have resulted in double figures. 17, 12, 17 and 16. Yeah. Brilliant form for Jason Doyle off gate number two. Greg Hancock, the series leader, is off three. And Matty Zegar fighting for his Grand Prix status. Matty Zegar is off the outside gate right now, 13th in the World Championship, 14 points off the top eight. Yeah, a bit of poor season by his standards. He's a Grand Prix winner. Jason Doyle in gate number two. Quite possibly the best rider in the world right now. Here we go. Straight through. Straight into the tapes. Goodness me, what was that all about? Nerves. Yep, yeah, must and be. And that's quite an important because he had the inside gate. We saw how crucial that was for Smolinski in heat number one. And that is just a mistake from Pavlitsky. And uh, he'll be bitterly disappointed. Moves early and just charges the tapes. Will be excluded. Yep. And that's uh, bitterly disappointing. You can ill afford because the outside gates will be much more challenging for riders. Clearly, he's excluded. Krista Gardell, the referee this evening, vastly experienced, of course, Krista. That was uh, one of the easier decisions he's had to make quite, in his quite, career. Quite possibly, yeah. Yeah, so um, Piotr Pavlitsky uh, excluded. 
for touching the tapes in the second race of the night. We'll have to do it again. We will. It's interesting just to reflect on the fact that the Grand Prix is here. I was fortunate enough to ride in the very first Speedway meeting back in the early O's here. And I can remember them saying to me, we will have a Grand Prix here. And I was thinking, well, I'm not so sure. <laughs> but uh, that dream has now come true. And uh, for all the hard work they, they put in, it is... Uh, a racing, a barn sport area here. There are several other speedway clubs in the close vicinity. Gustro is one, Wittstock and Neubrandenburg. So a hardcore following of speedway in this part of the world. Let's just, uh, while we've got a bit of time, while the riders come round, talk to us about that grass track over the back of the speedway stadium here. How big is it? Yeah. How lucrative was it? Um, how big was it in terms of uh, the amount of crowds that they had when yeah. you won, was it five of them here and your yeah. dad won one as well? Yeah, my dad won back in the early 60s. Yeah, they used to get 30,000 people for the event. It's in May, the bank holiday weekend. It's 1.8 kilometers for a lap, and it had three right-hand corners and a jump. Um, so what you had, speed did you get up to? Well, over 100 miles an hour down the hill, down the far side. It's a unique challenge to man and machine. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It was quite a was uh, very surprising coming here the first time. Went away, realised we needed to make some severe modifications, but came back and uh, had a good run. Great days indeed for the man alongside me, but right back to heat number two now and Toby Croner, the man who comes in here as the track reserve for Piotr Pavlitsky. The other track reserve, by the way, Kai Hukenbeck, who has been riding recently in the UK for the Kingsland Stars and has had some good meetings for Kingsland. It's been a loaded learning process for him in the UK. Tobias Croner off the inside then here from Germany. Jason Doyle goes off gate two in blue. Uh, he's second in the world championship behind Greg Hancock, who's leading right now off gate number three in white. And Matty Zegar, the Slovenian, going off the outside gate. Big moment for Kroner. He probably never expected to be in this soon. If no, at all. absolutely, and uh, don't rule him out. Uh, he knows these tracks extremely well and takes Speedway almost like a hobby these days. He has a very good job back in his home country, um, but thoroughly looks forward to going racing. He's got that inside gate. And if he gets there level with Jason Doyle and Hancock, there's no doubt that he will get that nice run around the inside on the first corner. So, great opportunity for the Germans. Here we go then, heat number two, second time of asking. Zegar coming across, Doyle is there, what a start from Jason Doyle, gate number two, Toby Kroner is second right now, but coming hard around the outside is Matty Zegar, and Greg Hancock has been filled in big time, but as to be said, Toby Kroner was moving at the start, Krista Gardell has let it go, Jason Doyle is going to close the gap on the world championship leader to four points if it stays like this. Well, Doyle, once again, just he is full of confidence and Kroner was rolling a little bit, got away with it. Zagar out of shape. That's going to allow the German up into second place. Just a rut appearing. Can he respond? Hancock was out the back, filled in massively on the opening lap. Oh, a real tussle for third and fourth. And Tobias Kroner taking advantage of the mistake by saying, oh! oh, Hancock running in the back of Zagar. That was tight. God, that could have ended in tears. But for Jason Doyle, it's another win. He is in the form of his life right now, Jason Doyle. Toby Kroner picks up second spot there as well as the track reserve. But Greg Hancock had to get off the gas for one awful moment. I thought he was going to go high-siding off the back wheel of Matty Zegar. Thankfully, it didn't happen. No. But that is a huge result for Jason Doyle of Australia. He's four points off the world championship lead right now. Doyle, Kroner, Zegar, Hancock. That is your result of the second race of this German Grand Prix. Well, yeah, it uh, was uh, plain sailing for Jason Doyle and that confidence and uh, is quite clear to see and he roared away out in front, took uh, the race from gate number two. Even though Krona actually made a great jump, he doesn't get there. It's Doyle that just slams the door shut as they go around the inside on the first corner. Zagar then comes through into second place, but there you see the mistake. Just gets too much grip, a little rut appearing in the second heat. Zagar running a little wide, and the German Kroner was there ready to pounce and took full advantage. Hancock came on strong later in the race, having got in all sorts of trouble. A little greasy on the outside in the first oh, corner. Look at this. But later on in the race, that was awfully oh. close. He could have gone over the handlebars, and that could have been really quite a nasty incident. But Jason Doyle, well, what can you say about Jason Doyle? He quite clearly is the form rider in World Speedway at the moment.
Interesting as well, Jason Doyle has just agreed a new two-year deal with Swindon Robins in the uh, Elite League in the UK. So he's sorted his British future out for the next couple of years. He's sorted his Swedish club out as well. He's a very happy man right now, right. Jason Doyle. Just and building up to heat number three now, we have the reigning world champion going off the inside gate. Niels Christian Everson, here's Nicky Pedersen off gate four. Now, he looked good in practice yesterday yeah. and had a good Grand Prix last time around in Gorjov. Yeah, new engines and uh, improved performance. More confidence coming back to Nicky Pedersen, and he rightly say looked impressive yesterday. Wilford Nunn on the inside always looks good in practice. Uh, Freddie Lingren coming out of gate three in the white helmet colour. Got through the challenge in uh, the GP challenge in Vetlander last weekend. Is now confirmed Grand Prix rider for 2017. Delighted for him. Ty Woffenden off the inside from Great Britain. Niels Christian Everson of Denmark off two. Freddie Lindgren gate three white and Nicky Pedersen going off the outside in yellow. That's your lineup for heat number three. And again, a terrific lineup here. Fabulous lineup. So difficult these heats. So difficult to choose between riders. Everson didn't practice yesterday. It's been a tough campaign for the Danish man. He's outside the top eight, as is Nicky Pedersen. They really do need some big scores. Here we go. He's number three. Good start for Pedersen. He's got there right now, though. That's a great start from Wuffenden. Everson and Pedersen, the Danes, having a real battle now. And now Pedersen is looking like he's just about to get the drop. Wuffenden has the lead on the inside run. Nicky Pedersen is second. And now of Everson, but there's no way through. And Woffington made a great start there, Kel. Yeah, flew away from the tapes. He's been working hard on his starting. It's uh, been a weak link for him in this season, but off the inside, made no mistake. Nicky Pedersen worked really hard to get the better of Everson initially. And now Freddie Lingman. Oh, that's going to get close, very close. Everson's in trouble for that. Everson straightened up. And really, Freddie Lingman had nowhere to go and had to bail out. Everson. I just sense that he will be excluded there. Does that not sum up Niels Christian Everson's season? The way it's been going, Freddie having to go around the outside, and then Niels just got some grip. There was nothing intentional there at all. He got some grip. He's gone straight across uh, here absolutely. to check that Freddie's OK. Yeah, no malice in it. Too much grip, straightens up, leaves Lingren with nowhere to go. Everson will be excluded for that one. Yep, there we see. That's where he loses control, and that's where he goes into Freddie Lindgren. Lindgren's up, though. He's walking back. That's good yeah, to see. Yeah, he's OK. They'll give him a bit of time, of course. Interesting to see if Chris de Gardel... There will be a rerun. Yeah, yep. we can see the blue exclusion lights on. You're dead right. Niels Christian Everson this year has had... If he's had any luck at all, it's just all bad. Yeah. And once again, uh, his opening race here. He really does... He faces a stiff uphill task now to get back into the top eight and can ill afford those sort of incidences. You know, he's a regular Grand Prix winner in the past. Well, he's 14 points off the top eight. Exactly. And, so and he's not going to score in this race now. No, so um, the job is not getting any easier. And uh, Lingren just making his way back. Good to see him up and about. And as I say, Wuffenden was away, but he will have to do it again. Yeah, well, Lindgren had that terrific Grand Prix challenge last weekend in Vetlander to qualify for next year's Grand Prix. He's done enough this year, though, to suggest, you know, with a lack of preparation and a late call to get into the to get to the Grand Prix, he's done pretty well. Absolutely. He's um, uh, been uh, riding well this year. I would like just to have a mention for Andreas Jonsson, who is not here tonight. Yes. He's replaced by Michael Jepsen Jensen. And Andre Johnson will possibly miss the rest of the season with uh, injuries he sustained last week. So do hope that uh, he can make a full recovery quickly. Very much so. Now, Martin Smolinski is down in the pits. We can, we'll be hearing from him very soon. And uh, it was a great start for him in uh, heat Indeed number one. And uh, the crowd here, just look at it, absolutely packed to the rafters here. Uh, it's good to see such a, a great crowd. And now we can hear from Martin Smolinski with our man Steve Brandon. Martin, a great start to, start to the night for you in heat one. Of course, not bad. I mean, in front of the home crowd, like the first heat, and he's just pumping up the atmosphere. Yeah, that's what we need in German speedway. But uh, back in the Grand Prix series, I know you've won one before, but a, a great chance to sort of show you're still around at this level. Of course, I mean, I'm not showing up on all the racing league in Poland, Sweden, but I think uh, the power and the performance I put on, you know, the boys don't know me, you know, but I still can pass them and I'm there. It's, it's quite a interesting track. track. Yeah. It's really sensible how you approach the meeting. Of course, the track is a bit hard out 
there, it looks a bit rough lately. You can see already now, you know, because they put a lot of water out there. Really a bit tricky, but I see, I see, I know the track very well. I was racing here twice this year, and my engine's going good, so the Java babies are running. Long way to go, thank you, Tom. Yeah, great start for Martin, and quite clearly delighted with that. Has experience here, saying that he'd uh, raced on two occasions previously this year, so um, had the setup. But he also had the inside gate, which quite clearly is going to be an advantage tonight. It'll be interesting to reflect on that a little later on when we see how many race wins we get from there. We've got this delay now. Um, uh, riders just going to have to be a little patient. Freddie uh, Lingren just uh, taking his time to get himself prepared for the rerun. Yeah, good to see that he is OK. Um, again, we have to say nothing malicious as far as Niels Christian Everson was concerned. And uh, I certainly back up what you said about AJ as well. Andreas Jonsson, an absolute um, kingpin of the Grand Prix series for many years. We yep. wish him well in his recovery. Uh, Hancock, 94. Doyle, 90. Now, Wolfenden was all set for three points there. That would have put him on 89. And uh, got it getting even closer uh, in the bid for the world title race. And this is how close it is just behind them as well. Well, you look at Piotr Pavlitsky when you consider he touched the tapes in his opening right on the inside gate, and he's in a precarious position in eighth place, and you've got Nicky Pedersen that looks like he's finding form. Freddie Lindgren also in good form. You can ill afford to throw points away. A little bit of inexperience there from the young Polish boy. We'll have to really dig deep. I sense this man could have a big night. Looking at him yesterday, nice. He looked very... Much calmer on the bike, and the bike appeared to be working really well. A lot happier. Yes, very much so. And he was uh, 12 points last time in Gorzhov was much more like his old self. And if Nicky gets uh, a little bit more confident, you know, he will be a man that isn't frightened to win. We know that he'll push hard and give his all. Well, and the big question is, will he get in the top eight? Nicky Pedersen, a three times world champion. Will he get back into the top eight or will he need a pick as a mm. as a nomination from the organisers of the series? I think he would get a pick. Um, you know, he's a big, big part of the Grand Prix. There's no doubt about that. But I just sense that Nicky's pride and his ability, I think he'll he'll battle his way back into the top eight. Here we go then with heat number three. There's three riders only because if you are excluded for being the primary cause of the stoppage, for causing an accident, like Everson did, then you do not get replaced. If you are excluded for a tapes offence, then you do get replaced by a reserve. So three riders only. Wolfenden off the inside, then no rider off two, Lindgren off three, and then it's Nicky Pedersen going off the outside. Pedersen made a decent start, but Wolfenden made an absolute beauty first time out. Yeah, and, and, and here the inside gate is uh, an advantage, but you're absolutely correct. His reaction time was much improved. He, he has spoken about that. It just hasn't been that sharp on the start line. Has worked hard on, on and off the track to improve that. Let's see if he can reproduce the, the same sort of start now. Here we go, heat three, second time of asking. Start this time, although Wuffenden just about getting there, the red lights are on. It did look as though Wuffenden jumped the start slightly. I thought he let the clutch go, then pulled it back in, then went again, Kelf. Yeah, it was uh, marginal, was marginal, but he did seem to maybe be a little eager. Let's have a look now. There yeah, he, goes. he does drop it slightly, and because of the advantage of being on the inside, it's the right call. Yep. Because Pedersen actually had made a really good fist of it and very nearly got there from the outside, but Wuffenden yep. just jumps a fraction yeah. early, just a fraction, and quite possibly the right call. But we are taking some time to get through these first three races, um, which is a shame, but um, in that case, I, I agree with the referee. I think that was the right call. Yep, Chris Degardel absolutely spot on. Wuffenden, the man who just jumped the start slightly, dropped the clutch, pulled it back in and went again. So unsatisfactory start. And Wuffenden will have to do it again. He will be, and uh, just talking a little bit further about Ty, uh, Ty Wuffenden, of course, he's the reigning world champion, desperately wants to win a third world title this year, but I just get the feeling everybody's very concerned about Jason Doyle. You oh, know, the speed, quite right, too. Quite rightly, yes, because Jason Doyle's speed and his commitment, his fitness levels, and he's in that frame of mind where he just feels he can win every race. So... Quite clearly, what uh, Wuffenden and Hancock need to do now, they just need to make sure they just keep 
putting the points on the board because it's no doubt when the pressure really comes on, when it comes down to the crunch, both Hancock and Wofford know, know what it takes to win. Doyle hasn't been there yet, so I'm sure there's still plenty of action and mileage in this championship yet. Back up to tapes they are then, so a third start for heat number three. This time it's a restart, caused by Ruffenden, it has to be said. And uh, we'll go again with three riders only. Ruffenden off the inside, no man off two. Then it's Pedersen off gate, uh, sorry, Lindgren off three. And this man, Pedersen, going off the outside in the yellow helmet colour, Nicky Pedersen, yeah. heat number three. Try again, terrific atmosphere, packed house here at this uh, Tetero circuit. Um, just, taking a while to, yep, just taking a while to get going with these restarts. I'm sure we'll get some momentum going in the not too distant future. So here we go, hit number three. Wolfenden has already seen Doyle get a win in his only ride. What can Wolfenden do here? It's the start that time. Whoa, he's getting to hit the first turn. I thought Pedersen had got the better start. They're all bunched up, but Wolfenden has got that lead now. Here comes Pedersen around the outside. Lindgren holds second spot right now, but I thought Pedersen made a better start. Up the inside of Freddie Lindgren now, but Woffington holds the lead. He does indeed. That inside run once again, even though he didn't really make the start, gives you that advantage. Just the shorter distance, you're able to get there, and Woffington. Nicky Pedersen riding really hard in third place. A real battle between him and Freddie Lindgren, on, particularly on the opening lap. Woffington is beginning to put, pull away now. He's got a bit of a comfort zone. Freddie Lindgren. It down by Nicky Pedersen. And when you've got Nicky Pedersen after you, you know you cannot slip up one bit of concentration. But Woffenden has that lead. He's going to take the check and flag here. Three big points for Woffenden. And Lindgren just about holds on with Pedersen charging up the inside. Good race there. I thought Lindgren just about held out. He did, But please, yeah. Kelvin, cover for me there. I didn't think Wolfenden made the best start. I thought Pedersen made the better start. Have I made myself look stupid? No, you were spot on, but it's that inside line into the first corner which gives you the opportunity to grab the lead. Pedersen actually made a stormer from the outside. Going to be tough to win races from there, but as a consequence of him being on the inside, the world champion picks up the win. <laughs> Wolfenden. And Lingram Pedersen. There was me saying Wuffenden's missed the start, hits the first turn and wins the race. There you go. Here we see it again. Yeah, you can see he's made a reason. You know, it's just the initial drop. He didn't go. He spun up a little bit. He had a lot of motor on. We're so close. You can actually see how much motor they've got on. Pedersen, once again, third time of asking, just doesn't quite get there because this time Lingren had actually made a better start from gate three and really battles hard because Lingren, now he's a fully fledged Grand Prix rider for next year, he's got nothing to lose now. And he's racing hard, and he made it hard work for the three-time former world champion. Whooping it out in front, though, he won comfortably in the end. And now, the top of the standings between the top three, right now, it is more than interesting. Because we are in the latter half of the season, remember, and Greg Hancock has 94, Jason Doyle 90, Ty Woffenden 89, Chris Holder 77. Look how tight it is amongst the top three. Yeah, not so long ago, Greg Hancock had a much, much bigger lead than 12 that. Points. He had a 12-point lead. Everybody's saying it's all over. Far from it. And you only have to slip up marginally, and those other guys are going to be ready to pounce. Plenty of racing in this World Championship to come. Here we go, heat number four, then it's Chris Holder off the inside, Michael Jepsen, Jensen off two, Bartosz Smarslik gate three, and Chris Harris going off the outside, Holder, who is riding certainly a lot better, and it's a big night for Chris Harris tonight as well, the Great Britain rider uh, in the yellow helmet, many congratulations to this man, it's the 100th Grand Prix of his career tonight, fair play to him. Fabulous effort from Chris, one back in the Millennium Stadium, of course, um, back in 2007, and what a night that was for him. Finds Grand Prix at times very difficult, but he's a wholehearted rider and he gives his all. Great, uh, great uh, achievement that to get to 100. Holder on the inside, you know, has been in very good form of late. Chris 
Holder has got there. Gate one is working a treat, isn't it? Holder is there. Smarslick now holding second spot. Jepsen Jensen in for the injured Andreas Johnson is third with Harris charging around the outside. Can Chris Harris get there into third? He can. Chasing hard up. But the lead is with Chris Holder, looking very stylish here. Inside gate working a treat once again. I think we're going to say that once or twice tonight. Smarslick did well to get uh, from gate three into second place. Harris is riding strongly, you know, here. All over the back of the Polish boy. Now moving to the outside. Smarslick getting in trouble. Harris coming on strong. Can he get up the inside? Yes, he can. That's tight. Oh, maybe contact. Oh, that's a shame. That's well, a shame. Also, the riders have just gone into the last lap. The referee can either award this or... Did the red lights come on earlier than that? But it's all going to go down to a replay here. Was there any contact? I think there was. I think there was. You think there, there was? I think there was there. And uh, Harris made a really good fist of it. Smarslick actually yeah, it just gives him a little nudge, only a little nudge. I'm though. not sure. But the fact is, is that Smarslick lost all his momentum in, in the corner before. The door opens up there for Harris. And Are you sure there's contact? Minimal, isn't it? If there is, if there's any at all, it's minimal. Well, Krista Gardell is looking at this. And uh, we await the verdict. Uh, yellow's gone. And Chris Harris has been disqualified. Tough call, that one, you know. Really tough call, because it looked like there was very little contact, if any. Smarsley got excluded in the previous round, where everybody sensed that it was the wrong call. This time, quite possibly, gets away with one. He's aware that Harris, yeah, he's touched him there, Nigel. He's right, definitely so he's touched him there. He's gone down as a consequence yeah, of he that. Has, yeah. Shame okay, because uh, Harris had made a really good fist of it, and Smarslick, Smarslick had got it all wrong in the previous corner, and that's why he didn't have any um, uh, speed on the straight. Race has been awarded. Yep, certainly has. So Chris Holder wins the race then in heat number four. Chris Harris excluded as a consequence of the uh, stoppage of the race. So far, then, winners, Chris Holder, Ty Woffen and Jason Doyle and Martin Smolinski. And confirmation of heat number four, Holder, Smarslink, Jeps and Jensen, your finishing order. And three points apiece so far. Woffen and Doyle, Holder and Smolinski, and the title race is wide open. Yeah, good ride from Chris Holder there. Uh, we saw him riding in Britain earlier in the week, and he was uh, riding very well indeed, and he is a rider that's got uh, renewed confidence. He's a former world champion, so he's pushing hard to try and to get into the top three. We see it again now. Holder on the inside, that inside gate, and the run round the first corner is vital. Smarslick does well initially from gate three to battle his way into second place, and Harris is out the back. We're seeing this is Smarslick uh, getting away from the start, but lifts quite hard there, but is able to get across in front of uh, Michael Jepsen Jensen. Holder's comfortable in front, but then Smarslick gets in trouble there. We see it there. That kills his momentum. Harris is then thinking, Crikey, the door's opened right up there. I'm going to have a go. But that move there and a little bit of contact, the referee deemed that uh, Smarslick um, uh, was unsettled and that was Harris. If unfortunate that because really that was just a racing incident. Hold it though, please with the three points. Well, four heats gone here in Tetero and last weekend in Sweden, one of the biggest meetings in World Speedway in Vetlanda. It was the Grand Prix Challenge where the top three riders were qualified for the 2017 Speedway Grand Prix Series. And as usual in this type of meeting, the action was fast and furious because the prize is huge. For a top three finish, a place at the top table of World Speedway. Confirmation, Patrick Dudek, Martin Vasilik, and after a runoff, Freddie Lindgren qualified for next year. Yeah, well done, Freddie Lindgren. Many congratulations to him on a terrific achievement last weekend in 
Vetlander. He's got a lot of Grand Prix experience now as well. What about Jason Doyle, the man of the moment? He's with Steve Brandon. Jason, the game important here by the look of practice yesterday. You certainly had him on in your first ride. Yes, mate, their tracks are, the starts are a bit unfair at the moment. Uh, Gate Falls, is, I know it hasn't been getting the results, but it's primo there. But yeah, uh, at the moment, the track's a little bit wet, but I think it's going to come some racing and there's going to be a bit more lines. There's a long way to go tonight, but you couldn't have dreamed of a better start. Uh, first heat wins great, but like I said, five, five more uh, races and uh, hopefully into the final, it's going to be uh, a tough night. Yeah, well, Doyle is um, uh, doing the business, uh, keeping his feet on the ground. He's not allowing himself to look too far forward, but uh, he's putting plenty of pressure on um, Ty Woofenden and Greg Hancock, the championship leader, and it's tightened up considerably uh, in a relatively short period of time. Bit of track work going on, plenty of poles here. It's not too far from the Polish border, and Gorzhov in particular. Uh, those uh, fans are from that's only just over the Polish border so a fairly local meeting for them well now we can hear from Steve Brandon with Chris Holder Chris great start looks very comfortable on the bike in your first one yeah it was sweet um had gate one you've got to take advantage of the inside gates here and you know none of the gates are really special but been on the inside always helps Tonight, just looking at the draw, looking where you are, it's just about accumulating points where you can from every race. Pretty much. I got blue coming up next, so hopefully something like that again, and then I go three, four, three. So that's when it's going to be tough, and I need to have some good points early on. Hopefully by that stage, there might be a couple of lines open up if the dirt moves, if the sort of dirt comes together a little bit. Well, open. <laughs> No, but again, you just have to look at it, and everyone's got to start off every gate. You've got to make the most of it. Yeah, for sure. And uh, bike felt good. Everything feels pretty sweet. So tracks the same for everybody. So just get it on. Well, Chris Holder going to get on with it. Heat number five coming up shortly. Harris, Smolinski, Pavlitsky, and Lindgren is the man uh, going out in heat number five. Beautiful sunset here in Tetero. Uh, it really is a fabulous setting and the crowd really enjoying themselves. Although it's been tough going, we're in 40 minutes or so into this meeting. We've only had four heats because of a couple of um, incidents and uh, false starts. So the riders are ready. Uh, they're just waiting for one or two final bits of track prep uh, ready for the uh, action to resume. Now, Greg Hancock is with Steve Brandon. Greg, stating the obvious, but not the start you wanted. No, absolutely not. You know, it's uh, well, a little bit tricky there on the track in the beginning, but uh, just got to make better starts. The track looked kind of wet when you got off that inside line. Is it hard to sort of figure out what you're going to do if you're going to make changes for your next one? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was quite wet there, and I think I saw my back wheel twice when I ended up going into that first corner there, so I had to try to get it figured out quick and uh, yeah, I make a couple of small changes, but it's just about uh, making good starts. You had a fairly close look at Matty Zagar's back wheel at one point as well. Yeah, it was kind of a little bit of a, a lefty out of that corner when I was trying to go right, and that doesn't work all the time. <laughs> On a night like this, it's a world championship. You just bank that ride, let it go, get on with the rest of it. You got no choice, man. You can't uh, you can't focus on the bad stuff. You got to look for the good stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, Greg's got to bounce back from that uh, disappointing opening ride, but we've seen him do that on so many occasions, so it wouldn't be a surprise at all to see him come out and win his next ride. Martin Smolinski there, coming out in blue this time, was a. An excited winner in his opening ride. Gate one, heat one, and uh, made no mistake and picked up a terrific win. Inside gates will be of a big advantage, and it was quite clear that um, Chris Holder, who has experience of racing here in open meetings, he understands that once you get the outside gates, you really have to try and pick up as much as you can because riders will all drop points, I think, tonight. Very difficult to go through the card. Championship positions, we've seen it before, it's tightened up. Just five points between the top three now. Holder back, 14 points back in fourth. Holder does need a really big night if he's going to put pressure on the top three. And those guys are beginning to distance themselves away from the rest. Harris will be frustrated uh, with the exclusion in his opening ride, but he's got gate one this time, and Chris needs to bounce back. And look, Pavlitsky, now we can begin to see how big a mistake that was from Piotr. He's off gate three. He's off gate three, and he, he touched the tapes when he was on gate one, and that really was... That was a, that was a little bit of a schoolboy error there. Yeah, gate one has certainly been favourable so far with three wins in the opening four heats from uh, gate number one. 
And uh, any second now, the riders will be pushed off and will be ready to go. Here they come down the hill. Track grading complete, and we'll resume the Grand Prix in a few moments with heat number five. Yeah, well, Pavlitsky coming out. He'll be keen to get amongst the points this time, having touched the tapes. In actual fact, broke the tapes with a charge through them on the inside. Harris has the opportunity this time on the inside gate to try and take advantage. Smolinski won't be an easy customer because he's a confidence man, Smolinski. If he really believes he can start winning races, even at this Grand Prix level, uh, he has won a Grand Prix, so he knows what it takes to do so, and he would dearly love to do it in front of a home crowd. So uh, he'll be a man that's pumped right up tonight, that's for sure, Nigel. Certainly will. Heat number five coming up shortly then here in Tetero. Heat number five with Chris Harris off the inside, excluded in his opening ride, of course. Martin Smolinski, winner of his opening ride, goes off gate two in blue. Piotr Pavlitsky made that mistake, touched the tapes, and his opener off gate number one. He's off gate three now. And Freddie Lindgren going off the outside in yellow. Can Smolinski build on his first race win? Can Harris get through the four laps and maybe make gate number one count for himself here? Yeah, he got a feel for Harris. You know, he didn't do too much wrong, but uh, got it thrown out for it so tough one that one Smolinski was impressive Pavlitsky blew it on the inside touching the tapes there schoolboy error from Pavlitsky needs to bounce back in this one and Freddie Lindgren rode really strongly for his two points in his opening ride so he's got uh, he's got that motorbike working but Harris on the inside is in the box seat is there. Now they're all bunched up and Pavlitsky's gone down in the first turn. We're going to have to have the race stopped here now, yet again. And the referee has a decision to make here now. The easy one. Four first back. turn incident, all four back. That's the easy one to go for. Yeah. Pavlitsky there. There could have been contact with, um, with uh, Martin Smolinski here. Did Martin Smolinski take him down? Uh, that angle you can't really see. This will be better. Smolinski doesn't get a good run, and uh, Pavlitsky is able to come across, but uh, Martin Smolinski keeps pushing there, all four and riders he, he takes him down. All four. That's the decision of the referee. Right. All four riders back for the restart. Let's have a look at this, this move here now. Yeah, he runs into him there. And, so on uh, any other part of the track, Smolinski could well have gone there. Yeah, I think Smolinski is a little fortunate. The first turn is always a part of the track. First turn where a referee has a get-out, if you like, doesn't he? He has. And, uh, you know, we want to see four riders in the race. And, you know, I'm pleased that we will see four riders in the race. But if that had happened in the next corner, in the third and fourth corner, then Martin Smolinski could well have been excluded for pushing into the side of Pavlitsky and unsettling him. Martin, of course, is a rider that now fundamentally bases his speedway and racing career just in his home country. He doesn't ride often abroad. Um, knows these tracks particularly in Germany very well so uh, he'll be full of confidence right Jawas as well he's a factory Jawa rider and that's unusual now he's the only rider on a Jawa in the field this evening and uh, he made the switch a couple of years ago and there's no doubt that uh, his bikes look pretty competitive in the opening race very professional outfit um, it's a shame we don't see more of him really yeah, very much so. He does quite a bit of grass tracking as well, Kelvin, doesn't he, Smolinski, on the continent? Yep. Well, Speedway, yeah. Speedway, as you say, mainly is uh, is in Germany, but the grass tracking here as well, really. Yeah, he focuses pretty much primarily riding in, in Germany these days and uh, has a job and uh, rides most weekends somewhere in his own country. You know, a bit of tweaking going on there with the ignition. That's the ignition cover just going back on. You can actually move the ignition backwards and forwards to retard or advance the ignition. So some alterations going on for Pavlitsky. Not been the ideal start for the young Polish man this evening. He's been on his backside here in his second heat and burst the tapes in his first ride. So just needs to settle down a little bit. Yes, it's uh, been a nightmare start for Piotr Pavlitsky. 
As we build up to heat number five, second time of asking here. It's not been a smooth run so far, has it? The no, uh, well, you, three quarters of an hour of this one. No, well, you were talking about a rhythm. We haven't had that yet, have we? It's all been stop-start. Um, the track is such, when you have these flat tracks and it's this sandy material, it can dig up and uh, it can create issues. And we have seen that before earlier this evening. We've seen it so far. So I'm hoping that with track grading and a little bit of um, uh, water on maybe a little bit later, let's hope the track can settle down because so far it's creating a few issues for the boys. Yeah, and Harris was there off the inside. He made it to the first did, turn. Yeah, brilliant, sir. Chris Harris, Martin Smolinski, Piotr Pavlinski and Freddie Lindgren. As you line up, Lindgren, one of three riders who booked their place for 2017 in the challenge last week in Vasilik, the Grand in um, Vetlander. Vetlander, yes. Vasilik was one of them. Yeah, Martin Vasilik finished second night. Yes, Dudek was the winner. <laughs> Patrick Dudek won with a 15-point maximum. <laughs> and Freddie Lindgren had a runoff, which evidently was an unbelievable race yes. with Kenneth Pierre. They passed each other several times. And uh, Freddie Lindgren coming through to clinch his place in the Grand Prix Series next year. Yep, so Patrick Dudek, Martin Vasilik and Freddie Lindgren confirmed in next year's Grand Prix Series. This is heat number five. Pavlitsky has got there, a lovely start from gate number three from Piotr Pavlitsky. Now wheel to wheel, Chris Harris and Freddie Lindgren for second and third. Harris Camp charges into that turn. Lindgren has got nerves of steel though, he'll wind it on. And here comes Harris again. Harris having a real go oh. here at the inside of Pavlitsky. And Ooh. Smolinski's having a go on Lindgren at the back as well. Super lap there from Chris Harris showing a lot of commitment. Super move there from Pavlitsky to get off the gate number three. That change there seems to have worked, but keep your eyes on Chris Harris. Harris has got a lot of speed. Look at him go, charging in second place. Freddie Lingwin being dropped. Martin Smolinski out the back, all over the back of Frederick Lingwin. That's the go. Pavlitsky in front. Harris charging really hard in second place. Yep, Piotr Pavlitsky really having to work overtime here with Chris Harris having a go. And the man in third is Freddie Lingwin with Smolinski at the back this time. There's a few fans from Lesno in Poland here in Tetero tonight and they're absolutely chuffed to bits with that because Piotr Pawlitski who is a huge favourite with the Legno club in Poland has just pulled off a fine win and it, how he needed that as well after the Vital. start to the night that he's had Kel yeah. that was just what the doctor ordered <laughs> for Piotr Pawlitski he number five, Pawlitski the winner Harris was second, Freddie Lindgren third and Martin Smolinski at the back that's the opening points of the night for Piotr Pawlitski puts him onto uh, three level with Lindgren and Smolinski and Holder Doyle and Woffenden who are winners of their opening race so they have a heat in hand here yeah. but a nice ride under pressure from Harris yeah absolutely and Pavlitsky did have a lot of pressure and it was the opening points of the night for Harris as well both those two riders in first and second failing to score with exclusions in their opening rides Freddie Lingwin and Chris Harris working really hard be good to see the action actually in turns three and four because that's where Freddie Lingwin and Harris really come very close down this back straight handlebar to handlebar charging into the bottom corner here real commitment from Lingwin on the outside thought for a moment Lingwin was going to get the second place but as I go over the start and finish line it's Harris that gets to the front and then actually puts a lot of pressure on Pavlitsky out in front really tight action here on the opening lap super speedway yeah great ride from Chris Harris to see off Lingren there and what a lineup we've got coming up in heat six we have two of the top three in the standings doing battle Woffington and Hancock Hancock still the series leader but he's off gate number four which is not easy so we see Piotr Pavlitsky with Adam Skornitsky the Legno team manager having a chat with him there great, great way to bounce back nice isn't it you know because he did make a big mistake there on the inside gate one has been so good such an advantage to come out of gate three and pick up three points shows a lot of maturity yeah Hancock 94 Doyle 90 Woffenden 89 and we have Woffenden off gate two Hancock off gate number four in this race heat number six and you have Michael Jepsen Jensen off the inside, a replacer for the a replacement for the injured Andreas Jonsson, who crashed in Sweden in midweek. 
And Ty Woffenden off gate number two in blue. Peter Killerman goes off gate three in white. And Greg Hancock is going off the outside in yellow. Yeah, great, uh, great opportunity now for Ty Woffenden to put more pressure on the championship leader. Hancock coming from the outside has got to produce a super, super star. and Hancock is charging hard, here comes Greg Hancock, that is a magnificent move from Greg Hancock from the outside gate, he has torn it up there, he has the lead, Jepsen Jensen is second, Ty Woffenden is third now, Peter Killerman back, what a start from Greg Hancock, and what a first corner from Greg Hancock, really charged round the first rider this evening that we've actually seen, been able to move off the inside, a little bit more grip out there and got himself to the front. Third place, Michael Jepsen Jensen hanging on to second place. Tricky round the inside on the first corner, but look at Hancock showing great character, great speed out in front. What a way to bounce back. Really, now, this, this is the ride of a champion here. So, and now Wuppenden is really desperately trying to find any kind of drive to get the better of Jepsen Jensen. Will he go wide? Is there enough there to get around the outside of Jepsen Jensen? Great ride from Hancock. Now Jepsen Jensen holds out. There's nothing there for Wuppenden. Can't make it. Holds on to third there in the end ahead of Peter Killerman. But what a ride from this man. The old master, Greg Herbie Hancock. Normal service resumed. Spot on, Nigel. What a first corner from Hancock, the first rider we see who trusted his bike. A little bit more grip in the middle of the track. Power to the front down the back straight. Hancock never ceases to amaze you. Brilliant stuff. Hancock, Jepsen, Jensen, Wuffenden and Killerman. And that is a huge three points for Hancock. Puts him on a 97 in the championship. And of course, this, the 200th Grand Prix in the history of the competition. It's Greg Hancock's 199th, would you believe? <laughs> Quite a stat, yeah. Just missed the one when he was injured. He missed Voyance a couple of seasons ago. Here we see it again. Tapes are up. Jepsen Jensen on the inside. Hugs the inside. And look at that move from Hancock. That's the move that seals the deal for him. Here he is. We're focusing on the world championship leader. Look at that. He has such a talent for making the bike go forward off the start line. Allows the bike to run in the middle of the track there, just on the edge of the dirt. Bike fires him to the floor, to the front, down the back straight. Gets the better of Jepsen Jensen. Team in the pits delighted, and rightly so. Not easy to win races from the outside. Well, he did it nicely, very nicely. And, of course, the next Grand Prix coming up in Stockholm in a fortnight's time, which is uh, his European base in the summer. The Californian uh, based just on the outskirts of Stockholm. And uh, so it's his home-from-home home Grand Prix in the Friends Arena in a couple of weeks' time. Looking forward to that magnificent venue. And in three weeks' time, it's Torren in Poland. And then we move on to Melbourne, Australia. What an end to the GP campaign it's going to be. And this man in blue, Chris Holder, is up against a man banging form, Jason Doyle. This is a terrific lineup. Niels Christian Everson off the inside in red. Chris Holder, gate number two. Jason Doyle, who's just seen Hancock win. He's off gate three in white. Very much in the title race, Doyle now. And Matt Sajanowski is off the outside. Yeah, great lineup. Everson on the inside needs to just get a heat win under his belt if he can. But what a lineup, you rightly say, Nigel. Holder was very impressive first time out. So was Doyle winning from gate two. Janowski had to work hard for his points. But there's real top quality here. Settling down. Everson desperate for world championship points. Can he do it from the inside? A start from Niels Christian Everson, but Doyle's around the outside. Everson's going to take him wide, but oh. Doyle's held on. What a ride from Jason Doyle in white. That is spectacular. Everson is second right now. Burning yellow is Matt Sianowski. And Chris Holder is at the back, charging hard after Sianowski. But Kelvin, what a race from Jason Doyle. Doyle just won't be beaten right now. Really just surged to the front. Really tight with Everson coming out of the first with all that confidence, all that speed, all that belief, he just forced his way to the front. Everson hanging on in second place. Janowski got the better of Holder initially. Holder out the back, but Doyle is a man on a mission right now. He is the fastest rider in the world. 
It will not be a surprise at all if he wins the World Championship riding like this. Going to keep that gap in the world title race to just three points behind Greg Hancock. Every race vital, and what a win from Jason Doyle. Second place, Everson, third, Janowski. Holder again, like Wolfen did in the previous race, tried absolutely everything, but there was nothing there for him, and he couldn't go through. But what about Jason Doyle? Sometimes you go through a phase in your career where everything you touch seems to turn to gold, and that's exactly what Doyle is doing right now. It's a win for him, Everson second, Janowski third, and Holder at the back, as I say, tried everything everything but Janowski had enough and Doyle leads on six with Paul, Chris Holder now on three points from two rides apiece seven heats gone here in Tetero and Jason Doyle well unbelievable form fabulous form from Jason Doyle and comes up with a stunning performance here particularly in the first corner tapes are up Boys are charging towards the first corner. It's neck and neck between Everson and Doyle. Everson had to move off the line, but even though he did that, Doyle still had all the answers. Allowed the bike to run round sort of two-thirds track. Seeing it now, you watch him. He allows the bike to, well, he probably was forced there in truth by Everson moving off the line. But such is the confidence, such is the belief, he's able to get round the outside of the Danish man and he hits the front, wins comfortably. This man really is setting World Speedway alight, unbeaten so far, gate two and three, unbeaten. That is a terrific effort at this early stage. Right, heat number eight coming up. Nicky Pedersen, the man in the white helmet colour, with a job to do over the next few rounds to get into the top eight. Antonio Limbach, a man in red who has uh, really ridden better than his scores suggest this season. Don't think anybody can argue with that. Heat number eight, Limbach off the inside. Matty Zegar, gate two. Nicky Pedersen, gate three. And a brilliant youngster, Bartosz Marslik, going off the outside. Yes, Marslik, uh, touch fortunate to get away with that exclusion, I think, uh, a little early on. Pedersen, you're bang right. He needs to keep pushing on. More, uh, much more like it last time. Antonio Limbach is just in the top eight. Just in after his early season form. He, is, he has dipped and he needs to get back to winning ways, making some starts because he's been, at times, devastatingly quick. Just on the run-up to the World Cup, crikey, he was flying high, but uh, subsequently hasn't been able to keep that uh, consistency. He's on the inside gate, can we see the best of him this time? Smarslick's going to try a big run around the outside. Will Lindback allow him the room? No, no, he won't. He's closed the door big time. Lindback has the lead. Smarslick is second. Third in blue here is Matty Zegar. Nicky Pedersen now trying to come through. It's a third place and gets the better of Zegar. Lindback with the lead. He was ruthless. He knew where Smarslick was and he closed the door. Slammed the door, shut down the back straight and got himself to the front. Smarslick coming on hard in second place. And he... Uh, Put pressure on Antonio Limbach out in front. Antonio Limbach will have to keep it wound on, giving himself a little bit of breathing space. Pedersen's got the better of Zago and has got himself in the race, but with a just over a lap to go, Antonio Limbach is looking good for a win, a much needed win. Yep, very much so. This will be a huge boost for Antonio Limbach as well. Quite a few Swedes in the stadium here tonight as well. And Antonio Limbach is going to come across the line. Three big points for him. Smarslik second, third Nicky Pedersen and Matty Zegar at the back there. Pedersen and uh, Zegar having a bit of a ding-dong at one stage there as well. But that was a good ride from Limbach. He knew exactly where the man behind him was and he ruthlessly shut the door, which is his right. Absolutely, he had to because there's no doubt that the rider was coming on strong behind him. Smarslik was looking like he could get to the front. Antonio Limbach picking up three points there. That was a terrific effort. It was indeed. So this is how it looks after two rides apiece. Jason Doyle, a maximum man on six with Wuffenden and Smarslik on four, but significantly, Greg Hancock back in the winning mood. Yeah, that's more like it from Antonio Limbach. He'll be pleased with that. He's been working so hard without any reward, and that must. There comes a point where it can begin to affect you. The inside gate works well for him. He's in the middle of the track there, and look at Smarslik. Smarslik then having to shut the throttle because Limbach was in uh, in charge, just in front. Tapes up again. 
Slow motion towards the first corner. Good effort from Smarslik, you know. He got across from the outside. He's in the dirt there. And if Lindback hadn't moved over, there's no doubt that the young pole would have got to the front. Nicky Pedersen rides strongly to get the better of Zagar. He's into third place there. And actual fact, although Pedersen's only got the two points, has shown decent speed. And he's got inside gates to come. But uh, Antonio Lindback, failing to score first time out, puts himself on to three points. And uh, that's a nice little boost for him. Has to be said now that darkness is falling here. It's a lovely temperature as well. Very pleasant indeed. Crowd have made their way to the uh, food areas. Plenty of options for a bite to eat and uh, the bar areas as well. People enjoying a beer and soft drinks as well. It has to be said, but it's a party <laughs> atmosphere here in Tetero tonight. Yeah, plenty of poles. Uh, they're not too far away, the Polish border. So there's a, a healthy contingent uh, from the poles from Poland. And uh, they've got and they've got the playoffs coming up tomorrow, of course, in the extra league. So big time speedway uh, and domestic level. So it's um, uh, lots of exciting speedway in uh, all parts at this time of year. But Tetero here this evening is um, uh, is looking good. Now Chris Harris on the occasion of his 100th speedway Grand Prix, he is with Steve Brandon. Chris Harris, uh, I'll talk about your first ride for a minute. Did, uh, did your competitor get off the bike a little bit easy there, do you think? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I've seen a bit of re uh, the replay, but it is what it is. You know, we've all been in that situation. So, um, fire good speed on the bike, though. So, um, it was just disappointing, but, you know, we move on. Good speed again in the second one as well. You ride in the mix with that heat. Yeah, definitely. I've come close a few times there, but, um, yeah, we'll go out and hopefully make a better start this time. We spoke about it earlier, but we'll ask about it again. 100 Grand Prix, the seventh rider to do it. It's a very good achievement. Definitely a great honour and a great achievement, so one I can uh, put, put down on the history books. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you. And he's got the inside gate again, Nigel. So, you know, I'd like to think that after a disappointing start that Chris Harris has got some speed underneath him. And if he can just get his nose in front, he'll win a race. You know, he's got the speed to do so. So he's got the inside gates to come. So let's hope he can build on that uh, two points he's got. Having to be a little patient again, because now... We've got uh, the trap prep going on. Now let's hear from Ty Wuffenden with Steve Brandon. Ty, four points, two races gone, but it looks like a track where you're going to have to sort of earn every point tonight. Yeah, for sure, the points are close after the first um, two blocks of racing, so uh, I'd expect it to be like that all night. It'll be um, tight for the semi, so just going to keep pushing. I um, feel like I've got a pretty good setup. Um, yeah, a couple of good starts in the first one, but not the second one, so, you know, it is a point that I need to work on, and we are working on the last two or three races in that block, though, you must have been encouraged to see that there was some starts to be made off the outside if the gla gating gloves are right. Yeah, for sure. I got, um, I got game three and, um, yeah, you know, had a good one in the three. Uh, then Nicky went out there, he was pretty close, but just didn't quite get there. So, um, you know, the outside gates are working, but so are the inside. That's why the points are so close. In the middle of a meeting, the World Championship, it's not really about that. It's about focusing on tonight and just building more points and going away with a big score. Yeah, that's it. You know, we're going to keep plugging away. Um, get to the semis, get to the final, um, go in with a nice handful of points and uh, you know, all adds up again here. Long way to go, thanks for talking to me. Yeah, pretty much an even spread of points and uh, Greg Hancock with a zero and a three, but ominously for his title rivals, Kel, Hancock looked wonderful, didn't he, coming uh, from the outside gate in that last ride, he was full of confidence. Yeah, great move round the first corner. When we start talking about making the gate from the outside, that isn't actually strictly correct. It's actually that the run in the first corner has allowed riders from gates three and four to actually get the better of the opposition as they go down the back straight. And that's why we've seen riders winning some heats and picking up some heat wins from the outside. So I get the feeling it will be riders in the latter part of each block that could exploit it because they actually have pulled the dirt back in towards the inside when we go into the next race. But the track has developed and it is good to see riders being able to use the outside line. It will never be easy here because the track is not banked and as a consequence, it's much more difficult to get around the outside of another rider. But we have seen it on two or three occasions and let's hope we see more of it as the, uh, the meeting progresses. Well, plenty of water going back down now, Kelv, with um, uh, the darkness descending and the temperature a lot more um, pleasant, shall we say. It's not it's baking ideal. up now. Yeah, it's, it's ideal perfect. racing conditions, Nige. 
don't think we need too much water because it'll get greasy. They put an enormous amount of water on earlier today. We see the gate stats. This could be quite interest interesting. Yeah, no surprise. The inside gate has been easily the best one and you can win from the outside two gates, but um, you're going to have to be very brave in the first corner to pull that off. Yep. Very much so. So uh, just a matter of moments before we'll be back out with uh, heat number nine. Very predict, very very hard to predict who is going to win this Grand Prix tonight. Yeah. Jason Doyle obviously looking fantastic right now, but on a track like this, Kelv, it's harder to predict than than many places, isn't it? Yeah, because the track is a leveler, and uh, because it's more difficult to actually like we've seen Wolfenden uh, won a race, and then as hard as he tried, he just couldn't find a way through, and that can be a frustration of a track like this. Uh, Jason Doyle has got gate four in his next ride, so that'll be interesting to see how he gets on. But he's got gates four, one and three to come. And the sort of form he's in, you could still see him picking up a whole hat full of points. Smolinski there just uh, waiting with his helmet on. He's out again. He's had a win and a last. So he's got gate three next time. So. He'll be hoping, and this big, big crowd, I tell you, it is an enormous turnout for this evening's event. I get the feeling it's taken the organisers by surprise because it took some of them an hour to get in once they got to the gate. So really has been a fantastic turnout, and there's a terrific atmosphere. Yeah, and uh, plenty more superb fast racing to come. And the World Championship race is shaping up so nicely, Kelv, with uh, Stockholm to come in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Torren after that, and then Melbourne. So uh, a lot of racing and a lot of points up for grabs. It's going to be a great end to the season. Yeah, I think there's plenty of mileage to go in the championship chase. You know, it was looking a little ominous when uh, Hancock pulled that 12-point uh, lead, and, you know, it was looking like it was his to lose. But with the amount of rounds to go and the amount of points up for grabs, Hancock has just slipped a little, you know, from his very high standards. and. Jason Doyle has surged up the charts, really has been in devastating form. So um, plenty of work has gone on there. I hope it's not too greasy because quite a lot of water has gone on and the temperature has gone down. So it might be a little greasy in this first race back after the track prep. And the heat nine with Hancock on the inside. He'll be pleased with that. Smolinski on gate three, Schmarslik on gate two, and Everson, who's having an awful season, nothing going right for him, he goes from the outside. Yeah, and with Hancock off gate number one, you know, if it goes to form, it has to has to make him favourite from that inside gate. If um, the conditions don't actually uh, throw up anything unpredictable, and this is a, a real chance for Hancock to add three more points, Kelf. Absolutely, Nigel, and he'll be looking at that. He'll be more than aware that uh, this is an opportunity on the inside. We saw with the gate stats how important it is to have the inside gate. So Hancock, the championship leader, off the inside. Can he win another race? Well, Greg Hancock then up at tapes, and uh, here we see the standings. Can Greg Hancock hit the 100-point barrier here? With a win in heat number nine, he's off that favoured inside gate, of course. Uh, Bartosz Marslik on 79, he's right alongside him on the starting grid here in heat number nine. You've got the wild card, Martin Smolinski, you've got Niels Christian Everson in there as well. So heat number nine is coming up here. Yeah. So, riders up at tapes. Christa Gardell ready with his finger on the button. Let's go racing again with race number nine here in Tetero. So can Greg Hancock hit the 100 point mark with a win here in heat number nine in his 199th Grand Prix. He's up the inside gate. Bartosz Marslik, gate number two in blue. The pole on four points so far. Martin Smolinski, a winner and a last for the wild card. And Niels Christian Everson off the outside gate in the yellow helmet colour. Heat number nine it is, and Hancock has to be favourite off one. He does indeed. Plenty of work has gone on the track. Quite a lot of water has also gone down. It looks a little greasy. We're very close to the action here, and I'm looking at the track. And in places, particularly on the inside run to the first corner, it looks a little greasy. It'll be interesting to see how the bike reacts from Hancock's point of view on that charge to the first corner. 
Smarslik will be a danger, of course. Smolinski, who uh, failed to score last time, Nige, he'll be looking to bounce back with a much improved here. And I think, I was looking over your shoulder earlier, I think he's changed his bike. Not entirely sure, but it could well be he's gone for his spare one. Everson on the outside, well, not much going right for Nils this year. Can he produce something special from the outside? Here we go then, heat number nine of the Tetano FIM German Speedway Grand Prix. Going into that first turn, Hancock is there. Everson has got the drive, but there's not enough quite there. Now they're bunching up, and here comes Everson, but there's no way through Hancock. Hancock holds the inside line. Now Everson is trying to go around the outside. Has Everson got oh, there? Oh, it's another oh, break. Oh, what a move from Niels Christian Everson. Goodness me, that's a great ride for the man in yellow. Greg Hancock holds second place right now. Oh. And Bartosz Marslik has just dropped the front wheel of Martin Smolinski. How on earth they didn't come down? Fabulous opening for Niels Christian Everson. Track has been overwatered on the inside and has caught uh, Hancock out. Everson had nothing to lose with the blast around the outside, took advantage, and as they completed the opening lap, got himself to the front. All like it for Everson. Hancock back in second place. Smarslik, wow, how on earth he and Smarslik, Sm Smolinski, excuse me, Smolinski didn't come down. Absolutely, what a ride from Niels Christian Everson. A fantastic move from him around the outside of Greg Hancock. Third place was Bartosz Marslik, and I don't think Martin Smolinski is too impressed by Bartosz Smarslik. One or two words down the back straight now, and Smolinski pointing at Smarslik. Little bit of aggro down the back straight between the two of them. Smolinski is not happy at all with Bartosz Smarslik. But what a ride from Niels Christian Everson. Terrific ride. You don't become a bad rider overnight. And Niels Christian Everson is not a bad rider. Wonderful effort from him there. Second place was Greg Hancock. Third, Bartosz Smarslik. And Martin Smolinski at the back. Smolinski angered by the move from Smarslik, which almost cut off his front wheel down the back straight. And now Doyle on six, Hancock on five, Everson and Smarslik on five as well. But a little bit of controversy in that one too. Indeed there was, it was very close. Smarslik nearly rode round down the grass on the back straight, so I have some sympathy. There's no doubt that this is a fabulous opening lap from Niels Christian Everson, the sort of lap that he's been desperate for. Round the inside, the right decision from uh, Hancock, but the track is greasy with the water on it. And he spins up, we're watching the start again, and Hancock on the inside makes that bike work nicely to the first corner. But Everson coming from the outside commits to it and suddenly finds the bike really working well. A little bit squeezed there. He then gets round the outside. Shame we don't see the move actually back in that uh, third and fourth corner because that's where the action happens. Now, this is the controversy with Smarslik pulling a massive locker here he is. There's the locker now, and literally rides very narrow down the back straight here. Look how narrow they are. <laughs> very nearly, well, he does touch Smolinski, and that's why Smolinski was unhappy at the end of the race. But that man, he's not unhappy. He's got five points from his last two outings. That's more like it. Nice to see you smiling again, Niels. Yeah, such it's a nice, man, Niels Christian. Such Everson. a nice guy. Had a tough season, and uh, he's outside the top eight. Needs a really big performance, and that was uh, much more like it from him. Certainly was. Seat number 10 is here. And uh, Nicky Pedersen is here. Chris Holder is here. So we have two world champions in this one. Nicky Pedersen off the inside gate. Piotr Pavlinski goes off gate number two. Chris Holder gate three in white. And Peter Killerman going off the outside gate. Pavlinski who's had a tough night but uh, recovered well in his previous ride. Absolutely it did. He uh, hit the tapes, of course, in his first one, blew it, and then came out with a stunning ride off gate three. Close together on the inside two gates. Keep your eye on that. Start from Pavlinski, and he really did close the door on Nicky Pedersen there in the early stages of that one around the outside in white. Chris Holder is going to have a go here. The man from Australia in white, the 2012 world champion, trying the outside run. Pavlinski will let him through. I thought they were going to come down there. It's Pavlitsky. Holder won't give up. He's made of tough stuff. Chris Holder dives up the inside. Can't get there. Nicky Pedersen still in third place. And the man at the back is Peter Killerman. Pavlitsky made a fantastic... Slam 
opened the door in front of Nicky Pedersen. Then he nearly wiped out Chris Holder as they came to complete lap number two. And Pavliski is still out in front. Holder's got speed in second place. Pedersen's being dropped and Peter killed him in his form. But he's right back out of form. Pavliski, though, looking for a back-to-back -back win here. After a desperate start, this is a terrific bounce back. Yeah, brilliant ride from Piotr Pavlitsky ahead of Chris Holder, who has really made him work all the way through the race. Big three points again for Piotr Pavlitsky with Chris Holder in second spot there. And Nicky Pedersen is third, and it has to be said as well, what has happened to Peter Kilderman? Great first half of the season, and it just hasn't happened for him uh, post-World Cup. It's not been the best of seasons for Peter Kilderman, but for that man... Uh, Piotr Pavlitsky, a fantastic ride, and he is uh, certainly working hard for a top eight spot for next year's World Championship. A top eight this year guarantees a place in next year's Grand Prix Series. Pedersen was third there ahead of Kilman, and this is what it means. Pavlitsky joins Doyle on six, but Doyle has a race in hand. Yeah, great stuff, though, from Piotr Pavlitsky because kind of blew it in his first race, could easily be on nine. Uh, when he had the inside gate and charged the tape. So see it again, he makes a fantastic start. Not easy to do that over Nicky Pedersen, who was on the inside of him. He then roars around the inside. Holder comes up the outside to get himself into second place. And Holder probably had more speed than Pavlitsky. And a couple of moments in this race, it really was quite tense. And they very nearly came together as they came out of the fourth corner to complete the opening lap. Very close indeed. Quite possibly going to see it now. Yeah, Pavlitsky there just charges across there. Holder had to respond there. Had to just momentarily shut the throttle to avoid the back of Pavlitsky. Nicky Pedersen trying hard, but then loses momentum and has to settle for third place. And that is the third time that Pedersen has picked up third place. So not going his way tonight, but that man, six from three, and the two wins. That's a terrific effort, you know. Certainly is from Piotr Pavlitsky. Wonderful ride. As we move on to heat number 11 now. And uh, another terrific lineup. Can Matty Zegar ignite his night from the inside gate off the inside in red? The Slovenian who uh, knows how to do it at the top level of world championship racing. He's shown his best form. He's a Grand Prix winner. And he's off the inside gate here. Freddie Lindgren goes off gate number two. No pressure on Freddie's shoulders at all. He knows he's in the GP next year. Matsey Janowski goes off gate three in white. And off the outside in yellow, Michael Jepsen Jensen. Yeah, Zegar is an enigma. Um, he is such a quality rider, a graceful rider. He's a tall man, but has a superstar. But this year, it hasn't been working, and his confidence levels are low. You can see that when he rides the bike. He's outside the top eight, and he needs a minor miracle, I think, to get himself back into the top eight. So Zegar on the inside needs a big ride. Yep. Jason Doyle watching on. Here again. From the outside gate oh, on. How on earth have they stayed on the bike? That surely was an unsatisfactory start. But anyway, Chris de Gardel's let it go. And Michael Jepsen Jensen is the man in the yellow helmet colour. Has the lead now ahead of Matty Zegar. Lindgren's trying the outside run. And right now but that was very untidy in that first turn referee let it go yeah Freddie Lingman got it all wrong and just clapped at the side of Janowski very untidy indeed Michael Jepsen Jensen took advantage of that tight between Zagar and Jepsen Jensen but Zagar got out battled and is now back in second place with Lingren third but yeah that was very untidy could easily have come down then uh, Janowski yep certainly could and going into that Jensen with that lead. He's only in as an injury replacement tonight for Andreas Jonsson, but he's won a Grand Prix as well. Michael Jepsen Jensen. Zegar's really going wide and trying everything, but there's just not enough there for Zegar. And Jepsen Jensen wins it with Matty Zegar second, Freddie Lindgren third. But that was very untidy yeah. in the first turn. Chris de Gardello, the referee, thought, well, let's let it go. And Michael Jepsen Jensen cashed in. He did. With a fine win there in heat number 11. But Matty Janowski. He's off form right now in the Grand Prix. He is, and uh, there's no doubt that things aren't going his way, and after a strong campaign earlier in the season, he's slipping. Jepsen Jensen, that was a good ride from him.
It was, very much so, and uh, Matty Zegar was in second place with Lindgren third and Janowski at the back. And uh, after 11 heats, this is how it looks now. Jepsen Jensen on to six points and in with a great shout of a semi-final spot here. You need probably eight or nine points from five rides yeah. to get into the semi-finals. And Jepsen Jensen riding nicely, but Keep here's that first turn incident. Keep your eyes there. Oh, well, that was a heavy impact, you know, and that could easily have resulted in Janowski's chain coming off or even just going down. Untidy first corner. Jepsen Jensen didn't care. Saw the sparks coming out of the back of Janowski's bike. There, all over the place, Janowski. Very nearly coming down, and probably his race was run right there. Bits flying off the back of Jepsen Jensen's bike. He didn't worry about it. Probably made it go a bit faster, if anything. And he picked up a nice win. He's pleased. That's a decent return from three rides, six points. Had to get his gear together to get here, of course, uh, when he got the call up on Wednesday. But thankfully for him, not too far away. It's four and a half hours from where he lives in Denmark here, near Billund Airport, I do believe. Yeah, we bumped into him at lunchtime and he seemed very relaxed and he's having a good night as a consequence of that and an opportunity. It's, it's hard on Aiden, Andreas Jonsson, but Jepsen Jensen has come in and is riding well so far. Now, what a heat 12 we've got. Woffington and Doyle are in this race, and they're off the outside two gates as well. With Chris Harris on his 100th Grand Prix appearance off the inside, and Antonio Lindback going off gate number two. There's the series leader. He's the man they're trying to catch. <laughs> Greg Hancock. <laughs> so relaxed. Cool. So relaxed. Fabulous to see here, Greg. He's riding well again this evening, but heat number 12. Uh, this is a clash of the big guns on the outside for sure. Chris Harris off the inside. Antonio Lim back off gate number two, winner of his previous ride. Ty Wuffenden goes off gate three in white, and Jason Doyle is the man off the outside, the only unbeaten rider in the Grand Prix so far. Tough race this, you know, because Harris, although he, when he's on the inside and has got plenty of speed, Lim back winning last time out, but pressure on the big guns. Woffenden's up the inside, now Doyle free abreast, oh. and Doyle's got there! What a move from Jason Doyle, Woffenden is second, Harris is third right now, Lindbach's in the back, and Harris is coming up the inside of Woffenden as well, what a race this one is, but Jason Doyle kicking off, now Woffenden's got a bit of drive, Woffenden is going to chase after Doyle. He is indeed, but what an opening lap from Jason Doyle, the Australian brilliant again in the first quarter. Second place, Harris also had some speed initially, but Doyle in front. Woffenden really working hard. He's desperate to try and get the better of the Australian. Doesn't want to give too many more points away to him. And that's the Doyle riding out of his skin once again out in front. Sensational. He's going to stay only three points behind Greg Hancock in the title race. This is going to put him on to 96 points in the GP series. Jason Doyle, what a ride. Nine points for Doyle now. But an important second spot for Wuffenden too, uh, because in the bigger picture, you have to look to make the semi-finals. And, uh, well, that was wonderful from Doyle. He's not doing it the easy way. He's not necessarily getting there at the start, but he is pulling Claire down the back straight in great respect. Doyle and Wuffenden, good pals. They are indeed, and, you know, at the moment, this man is just head and shoulders above everybody else in the world. He is doing things that other riders just dream of. Three wins, nine points to his name. Fantastic. Yep, Doyle, Wuffenden, Harris, Limbach, the results of heat number 12, and after three... Three rides each, Doyle is head and shoulders above the rest on nine. Pavlitsky, Wuffenden and Jepsen, Jensen on six. Hancock, Everson, Holder and Smarslik all on five. Three points for number 69, Jason Doyle. Oh, Jason Doyle. Uh, we're running out of superlatives for him, really, yes. because he is riding so brilliantly and he's making it look easier. I can assure you it's not, because when you've got this sort of lineup, Wuffenden chopped to the inside. That was a split-second decision from the world champion, but look at Doyle. Doyle's got round them all. Brilliant effort from the Australian. Again, tapes are up. Wuffenden doesn't get away as well as he would have liked, and he now makes the decision, shuts the throttle off, chops to the inside, and he gives himself to the front. Harris is pushing Doyle, pushing him ever wider, but Doyle with the confidence, the bike looks up, leaning all over each other down the back straight, gets himself to the front. Sensational ride from Doyle. Wuffenden tried really, really hard in second place. 
just couldn't quite get there. And as hard as he tried, he had no answers, and Doyle had all of them. Super stuff from the two boys out in front. Harris in third, and disappointment for Antonio Limbach. But this man, who's going to stop him? Who's going to beat him? He is flying right now. Yeah, wonderful performance from Jason Doyle. Nine points out of nine. He's out in the next one as well. He's in heat 13, where he's got the inside gate. But Looking that's good. straight after a grading break and water as well. And well, uh, you can never take anything for granted when that happens, Kelv. He doesn't, though, does he? He keeps saying that in every interview, Nice. Don't want to get ahead of myself. Plenty of uh, grading going on. And I hope they don't put too much water on this time because last time they did overwater it and it caught, certainly didn't do uh, Hancock any favours. And uh, the sun's gone down, it's quite cool now. And there's plenty of moisture in the track. Let's hear from Michael Jepsen Jensen. Injury replacement for Andreas Jonsson. He's with Steve Brandon now. Michael, uh, third, a second, a first. A pretty solid start to your return to the series. Yeah, I didn't really feel like my bikes was working for us two ones. Uh, the last year was definitely better, but I still feel like it's not really going. It was way better at the practice yesterday. Um, but uh, it's helping with this last last heat with a win. So uh, we just keep fighting and uh, it would be nice with, uh, with a good finish off the season. You know how hard it is in the Grand Prix series as a permanent rider to, to sort of sit back as a sub all year and then get a call up with four to go. It must be quite hard to approach it. No, it's all right. Um, I haven't been a good season for me, but uh, well, you know, I need to prove something here. And um, I'm not really thinking about it. if I'm ordinary or in, like, instead of Andreas. But uh, I just got to do uh, some great results to finish off my season. Two more rides to go before the semi-final draw. I wish you well in those. Thanks, mate. Well, I, I, I think that, um, you know, coming in as uh, a last replacement, in truth, you've got nothing to lose, have you? You know, Just and, enjoy it. And enjoying it. And as a consequence of that, he's actually going rather well. Water is going on, Nige. And uh, I'm not entirely sure um, that that's necessary. Phil Morris, the race director, won't thank me for saying that. But um, uh, I think that um, it's not absolutely required right now. Yep, well, uh, it's going down anyway, and heat number 13, Doyle, Pedersen, Jepsen, Jensen and Smolinski is the way they line up ahead of heat 13, so fireworks being promised. And we can hear from Piotr Pavlitsky now with our man Steve Brandon. Piotr, a little bit nervous in your first ride tonight? Yeah, yeah, first uh, heat, uh, I have too much uh, ner nervous for my head. But uh, now I have a good start and uh, I'm looking uh, all the time for, for uh, speed for the straight. But uh, I think so. Uh, we change something, uh, little bit technician, and, uh, and uh, I think so much better uh, next week. My mathematics says that 12 race wins in the last four Grand Prix. You're certainly on the pace. Ah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, now, now it's much better and. Uh, uh, I, I don't know, I, I think so, uh, my bike now is uh, much better and, <laughs> and I'm, I'm I now better and every, everything thanks for, thanks for my uh, mechanics but I have full concentration for next hit. As a rider in the Grand Prix, is it hard sometimes to remember just to come to a meeting and enjoy yourself? Yeah, yeah, uh, Grand Prix is very hard uh, uh, all the time, e everywhere. Uh, uh, 16 riders uh, have uh, uh, good speed, uh, good fight uh, for for, ev for everyone lap. But uh, I, I'm concentration only only for my for me and uh, and to ke keep uh, fingers and it will be good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, he's a great guy, you know, uh, Pavlitsky, and he's come a long way this year. He's a World Cup winner. He captained the team in Manchester to that, and uh, he's matured. He was honest in uh, the interview there, just said I was too nervous for the first race, and that's fair play to him. But uh, he's responded uh, supremely well, and he's giving himself a, an excellent chance of making the semi-finals tonight. And he's a, he's a big plus for the Grand Prix Series, Pavlitsky. He's been a breath of fresh air. Yep, so the uh, water cart is now coming away and uh, into uh, just behind our commentary position, actually. I'm glad they've switched the sprayer off. We may have uh, had a bit of a shower there. 
So uh, heat number 13 coming up. Can anybody stop Jason Doyle? I he is magnificent. He's looking unbeatable, isn't he, at the moment? And he's coming out in uh, the next heat off the inside gate. The track has been watered quite heavily again. In actual fact, the inside gate, we're very close to the track here, and you can see it. It's wet, properly wet on the inside, which I'm not sure that all the riders will thank the, uh, the track prep for. But uh, nonetheless, championship standings, Hancock on 99, didn't quite manage to get to the three figures. Just got caught out by a stunning ride from Everson. Three points in front of Doyle, who's riding great. Wolfenden hanging in there on 92, and Holder just on 82. And then we look at the picture there, it's pretty much dominated by the poles. Yep, Piotr Pavlinski in eighth place, that's the last spot on 66, and Nicky Pedersen is eight behind that right now. Yeah, he slipped tonight, he, he's only managed to pick up three points, and he needs to pick up probably two wins in his next two rides. Plenty of track grading still going on, so uh, we're having to wait for the next heat to come out, which is heat number 13. Um, but um, I'm surprised, I'm surprised, Nigel. I don't, I, I don't like going on about it, but I don't know why they keep watering the track. Well, the grading breaks and the uh, track watering and that has taken longer than usual tonight here in Tetero. We are um, having uh, lengthy uh, gaps between every four heats, so... Um, Heat number 13 coming up uh, very shortly with uh, Jason Doyle, Nicky Pedersen, Michael Jepsen Jensen and Martin Smolinski. Um, that's coming up very shortly. The riders are at the top of pit lane, suited and booted, ready to come out. Raring to go. Yeah. And uh, we're raring to go because uh, we're very keen to see if Doyle can keep uh, winning races. He's um, He's got Nicky Pedersen to deal with, Jepsen Jensen, who's enjoying a good night. Martin Smolinski, who uh, started very brightly, but has subsequently failed to score in his next uh, second and third outings. I think they're now having to grade a little longer nights because possibly they have overwatered, And uh, that may well be a message from riders in the paddock telling them that they need to just give that a little bit longer. Yeah, Greg Hancock is actually walking down to the uh, fence area taking a look at it and he was the one that got caught out in the previous block of races when they watered and Everson got round the outside of him so quite clearly Greg just having a sneaky look over the fence but this is I believe as a consequence of a little bit too much water's gone on Jason Doyle can't wait he's there and he just wants to be let loose doesn't he you know Jason Doyle is a slow burner isn't he he's uh, 30 years of age uh, in his early 20s, it didn't look like he was going to achieve this level of racing. He then, in his mid-20s, had um, some severe injury problems uh, with operations on both shoulders. And he was a bit of a journeyman speedway rider, in truth. But in the last few years, there's, uh, the penny has dropped with him, and he now is the real deal. And uh, it's uh, quite, quite inspiring to see a rider suddenly burst on the scene like that. Well, heat number 13, a terrific lineup, but after a grading break, of course, you never know what is going to happen after track prep. The riders are on their way from pit lane very shortly, and the two minutes will be on. Well, um, still waiting for the riders to come down, and absolutely nothing is happening on the track right now. They're not happy. They're not happy, and I think that's uh, the tapes haven't been pulled down, and riders quite clearly are a little suspicious. Hancock's had a good look at the track, and my only thoughts are that um, the track is a little wet and they're not, uh, not happy with it. Well, there we are. Um, we're not getting any, any information from down there as to what the delay is here. So we apologize for that. I may be entirely wrong, but uh, there seems no other reason for the delay. They're doing the white line on the third and fourth turn to re-establish that. But that shouldn't stop riders coming out, should it, and getting ready for the race. Um, yeah, so, that's the why there is the extra delay night. It's to do with the fact that the boy is just walking around the inside of turns three and four, just re-establishing where the white line is. 
and that's why, because it's got a little blurred with the track prep that's just gone on. And for Krista Gardell, there we see, that's why we're waiting a little longer. And Krista Gardell, you know, his position, he needs to see that white line. You can put your front wheel over it, but you can't put both wheels over it. That's an exclusion if you do that. OK, good point. Right now, this is what this is all about. <laughs> that's it, give it a good pat. I hope he doesn't run out of that white chalk. No. Or is it talcum powder? Oh, I don't know. It's a lot of talcum powder. <laughs> um, but um, here we go. We're finally getting there, and uh, the tapes are coming down, and we uh, will get on with the action. He it's... should uh, He should get a round of applause now, shouldn't he? Well, <laughs> he hasn't done. <laughs> He's now going to come across the start and finish line. Mark that out. But, uh, yeah, won't be too much longer. Riders are now beginning to appear on the track. Jepsen Jensen, the first of those, who was a, an impressive winner last time. But uh, track is a little greasy. They'll be just getting a little feel for that before they come up to the tapes. Well, Jason Doyle then off uh, gate number one here. So, um, still a chance here for Doyle to go level with Greg Hancock here on 99 points. So, uh, heat number 13 coming up here in Tetero. It's been quite a delay in between uh, heats 12 and 13. Track grading, watering, white lines being painted, but we're ready to go. What a lineup it promises to be. What is in store for heat number 13? We'll find out very shortly. Here we go with heat number 13. Jason Doyle unbeaten so far, nine points out of nine. He's off one. Nicky Pedersen goes off gate number two. Michael Jepsen Jensen is off three. And Martin Smolinski going off the outside. It is a terrific lineup, Cal. Yeah, super lineup. Smolinski, who has just missed out on his last two rides. Plenty of work on the track and plenty of water as well. So that'll be interesting to keep your eyes on that. Doyle unbeaten going off the inside. That's Jason's team there, Jason Doyle's team. All British team. Uh, unusual these days with uh, the majority of riders using Polish mechanics, not Jason Doyle. Uh, we've got Jono there, David Haynes, the chief mechanic in the middle, and Sam Haynes, his son, to the right of him. So that team working extremely well. Champion, world champion looking on. Uh, he's got trouble with Doyle. Doyle's real fast right now. Yep, Doyle has that inside gate then. Can he make it pay here? Heat number 13 in Tetano, Germany. Here we go! Good start from Doyle off the inside gate. Jepsen Jensen tries that switch up the inside. Nicky Pedersen has to clamp the line to see off his fellow countrymen here. Smolinski's at the back once again this time. But Jason Doyle is a man on a mission. He's gone wide here oh. into the dirt. And a real and Michael Jepsen Jensen and Pedersen looked as though he was going to chase hard after Doyle there with Smolinski coming through into third and now Pedersen is going to chase after Doyle. Yeah, Doyle made the start from the inside, went very wide in turns three and four. Wide open for Pedersen and Pedersen nearly got there. Smolinski's taking advantage of Jepsen Jensen making mistakes but Doyle once again, no mistake from him. Doesn't matter what start he has, what conditions he has, he's winning races for time. Australia is about to go level with Greg Hancock in the world title race. This is going to put him on to 99 points. And Jason Doyle of Australia joins Greg Hancock at the top of the world championship. 12 points out of 12. He's in the semi-finals. A big second place for Nicky Pedersen there as well. He's found it tough tonight. Michael Jepsen Jensen was relegated to the back by Martin Smolinski. But what more can we say about this man? Jason Doyle, 12 out of 12, on his way to the semi-finals. Who can stop him here in Tetero tonight? Only himself, I think. He's just so good, you know, right now. And Heat 13 was all about Jason Doyle. What a ride again. Pretty much so from Nicky Pedersen second, Martin Smolinski third, and Michael Jepsen Jensen at the back on that occasion. Jason Doyle, 12 points out of 12. Moves him on to 99 Grand Prix points. Level with Greg Hancock. Heat number 14 coming up. Well, now we're looking at the joint championship leader. What a performance from Jason Doyle. Winning Grand Prix these days. 
stage winning Grand Prix heats for fun. The inside gate works well. Nicky Pedersen has to scrap hard for second place initially. Jepsen Jensen then has uh, all sorts of trouble. Tapes up. Doyle just clutching it all the way. Nicky Pedersen just, just allows the bike to run away from him a little bit. Recovers it into second place. Best ride of the night for Nicky Pedersen back in second place. It was a little bit um, uh, nip and tuck at the end of the first lap because Doyle elected to go very wide and that didn't work and he then went back to the inside. Jono Burks there working with uh, David Haynes on the right. 99 points apiece for Hancock and Doyle. What a move from Doyle that is. Ty Woofenden needs to respond, but this man is on a mission right now and it's very difficult to see anybody stopping him. Wow, what a world championship race. This year is turning out to be. We're building up to heat number 14. Then in 15, we've got Woffenden, and 16, we've got Hancock. Killerman, Harris, Zagar, Everson, winner last time out. He's off the outside in yellow. And every one of these riders needing points. If Everson can nick a couple from the outside gate, he could get into the semi-finals here in Germany. Yeah, he'll be pleased with that as well. And he rode so well last time to get the better of Hancock. And uh, he looked a lot happier when we saw him in the pits. Zagar struggling for four Grand Prix points. Peter Kilderman, you mentioned it earlier, Nigel, started the season like a house on fire, won the Grand Prix in Slovenia, and subsequently has found points very hard to go by. Yep, here we go. And it's a great start for Kilderman that time, but the red lights are on. Yeah, no surprise, he jumped it. Yep. So, Krista Gardell calling them all back here, I would think, maybe all four. Yeah, all four. He just dropped the clutch a little early there, Peter. We have uh, a fabulous view of that. This is from the inside. Well, looking at it that way. No, it does go a little early. Slightly, slightly. Marginal, but all four back. All four riders, yeah. All four back. And uh, I was just saying in the build-up to the race that Peter Kilderman, who started so well this season and has had a great uh, run in the Grand Prix Speedway, was a permanent wildcard pick. Jakob Olsen alongside him, looking after him. And in truth, the last few months have been very disappointing for him. He came into tonight's uh, meeting in 11th place with 50 Grand Prix points to his name. He scored 15 points and was a winner in Slovenia, led the championship, of course. Yep. But then subsequently hasn't hit a double-figure score since Nigel yep. and only got three points in Gorjov last time. So he needs to really turn his fortunes around. He had a bit of a knock earlier in the season, missed the World Cup, didn't he? And you know, uh, Peter Killerman has, uh, well, the bubble's burst, but for Jason Doyle, just keeps on going, doesn't he? Well, you know, the bubble is far from bursting for him, is it? It's all going his way, and you just sense that uh, he's a man that is completely in control of his own destiny right now, and uh, he's uh, super fit, the bikes are working well, and things are clicking into gear, and you said it earlier, everything he touches turns to gold right now. And uh, unbeaten, 12 out of 12, joint leader in the championship. Uh, happy days for Mr. Doyle right now. Mr. Kelvin Tate, I'm one of the fastest men ever around the Tetero grass track. Jason Doyle proving to be the fastest man <laughs> on the Tetero speedway track in the Grand Prix tonight. The first time the Grand Prix has been here. Peter Killerman off the inside, Chris Harris gate two in blue, Matty Zegar gate three, Niels Christian Everson off the outside. That is your lineup for heat number 14, second time of asking. And uh, can Killerman get there from gate one? Can Everson make it from the outside gate and put himself in with a great chance at a semi final spot? Here we go! Start from Killerman that time, and Harris tries the inside run. Chris Harris has got there. Chris Harris from gate number two. Here comes Everson. What a move from Niels Christian Everson in yellow. How did he manage that? Because he was at the back early on. Now he's gone from last to first. Chris Harris is second. Peter Killerman is right up his back wheel, and Zagar at the back. What a move from Niels Christian Everson. Zagar now coming charging up the inside of Killerman. Killerman repays the compliment. Charging back the first. Stunning opening lap from Nils Christian Everson, who missed the start from the outside. It all opened up beautifully for him down the back straight on the opening lap. 
And now you can see a rider release Nigel. All the frustrations are taken out. Charging away out in front. Good ride from Harris. Killed him on the inside. It's tight. No. Harris just hanging on for second place. Well, this is a big win for Niels Christian Everson of Denmark. That's going to put him on to eight points from four rides. And he can touch the semi finals. What a ride from Niels Christian Everson. He's doing it the hard way. And I reckon that was the ride of the night. The way he charged through. And uh, on a night where passing has been at a premium, that was superb from Niels Christian Everson, Kel. Yeah, such a good fortune about it but absolutely he didn't get there from the outside he cut to the inside and then Harris was also there but moved off down the back straight and Everson had all the speed and got through on the inside super ride from uh, Niels Christian Everson yep Everson Harris Kilderman Zagar at the back just not been his night has it Matty Zagar it's having a nightmare three from four rides now for a man who knows how to win a Grand Prix frustration for Matty Zagar here in Tetro this evening but what an effort it was from Niels Christian Everson stunning ride tapes up Peter Kilderman makes the start good move from Harris because Kilderman runs wide just slams the door shut in front of Zagar and here's the move the move down the inside there from Everson and you can see how much they want it they're desperate for their man to get to the front and Everson charges up the inside and gets there here we see the move from Zagar third place but only momentarily because Kilderman just comes charging back at him and retakes third place place but Everson don't think he's won two consecutive races in the Grand Prix series this year so it's a much improved effort from him no practice yesterday a zero and an exclusion in his opening ride and eight points from the next three races that is why he's looking a much happier bunny in there look that thumbs up from Everson well done Niels good stuff from him and now we have the small matter of Ty Woffenden um, needs to uh, really Keep going and uh, keep the pressure on the top two who are on 99. And Woffen done off gate wow. number three here. What a lineup, Nigel. The three, Just young, three young poles with him. You know, Schmars, Lekjanovski, and Pavlitsky, who's been strong in his last two rides. He's on the outside. Woffen done gate three. I don't didn't make the start from gate three in his previous ride, and gate three hasn't been great tonight. So, Woffen done, this is a tough heat, very tough heat. Yep, heat 15 coming up here then. It's Bartosz Marsnik off the inside with Matt Sianowski off gate number two. Ty Woffenden going off gate number three in white and Piotr Pavlitsky going off the outside in yellow. This is heat number 15. Big race for Woffenden. He's seen Doyle unstoppable at 99 points for Jason Doyle with Greg Hancock right now. Hancock, uh, 99, of course. Ty Woffenden tonight so far has scored six points. So uh, he yeah. is on 92. How he could do with a win off gate number three here. But he's got the young poles all about it. He's the lead. Here we go. It's all very tight in that first turn. And Wolfenden has been blocked. The poles are dominating here. Smarsnik coming through. Pavlitsky Whoa. down the back straight. And Pavlitsky's on fire here now. What a move from Piotr Pavlitsky. Second place, Bartosz Smarsnik. Bit of rivalry between them all here. Wolfenden is third. And the man at the back is Matt Sianowski. Piotr Pavlitsky riding beautifully. Wolfenden's coming back for more. Yeah, he's got himself in the third place, but brilliant stuff. Pavlitsky all over him in second place. Now Wolfenden going to the inside. Oh, that's awfully close. Pavlitsky and Smarsley really going at it for first and second. There's a bit of mileage here. There's a lap to go. Pavlitsky looking for his third win on the night. Get himself in the second place. Yeah, and here comes Smarslik up the inside. Oh, oh wheel to wheel. What a move from Piotr Pavlitsky. He's got the lead here down to the line. Nice down to the line. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. That's the race of the night. Oh, not a no shame. Not a doubt, no about, doubt about that. About that. Four laps of fabulous action between the two young Polish boys putting on quite a show. Woodfinden frustrated not being out of land. A big blow there, got out, battled to the first corner. Pavlitsky hangs on, he gets the three points. That's his third win. That's wow. a terrific effort after blowing it in his Maybe he should touch right. the tapes on his first yeah, side every meeting. Yeah, he got rid of the nerves. And uh, he's uh, ridden like he's had uh, nothing to lose subsequently.
Such a good race between the two front boys there. Polish boys, Polish fans delighted. Great speedway. And we've got Patrick Dudek to look forward to next year as well. We have indeed, and he's an exciting rider. And this man has ridden supremely well. That is a great comeback. Failing to score in his opening ride. And then picking up nine points from the next three. That's uh, that's great work. Yeah, Piotr Pawlinski the winner, Bartosz Maslik second, Ty Woffenden was third, and Mats Janowski at the back. Woffenden needs points in his last ride to get into the semi-finals. So uh, it's going to be nervous time for Woffenden when uh, he lines up in his last ride, heat number 17, and he's off the outside gate as well. Here we see it again. Yeah, here we go. Wiffenden just got carved up there, didn't he? Got squeezed between Janowski and Pavlitsky, who came really hard. Look at this move from Pavlitsky down the back straight. Charged to the front. Great effort then. Smarslik and Pavlitsky really going at it. Wiffenden working overtime. This is early in the race with Janowski going wide and Wiffenden getting himself up the inside into third place. Neck and neck between the two boys in front, but Pavlitsky riding so strongly. Seeing it again with Pavlitsky on the outside. Smarslik very nearly getting up the inside of him, but Pavlitsky slams the door shut. Super action that was throughout the four laps. Great score chart now with the, the inside gate to come for him. So he's in a commanding position now. Yep, very much so. Here we go with heat number 16 now. Greg Hancock is here. Now level in the World Championship race with Jason Doyle, 99 points. Freddie Lindgren off the inside here. Greg Hancock goes off gate number two in blue. Antonio Limbach gate three in white. And Chris Holder going off the outside in yellow. Yeah, all uh, work to be done for all four riders here, Nige. Five points for Hancock, desperate for more. Lindgren's ridden hard and is in the chase. This man, well, unbeaten. Pretty cool, relaxed back in the paddock, putting the pressure on everybody else right now. Doyle, Holder on the outside, he needs points as well. Here we go. Yep, here we go with his 16. Great start from Hancock from gate number two. Has he got there? The man on the inside is Freddie Lindgren. Now up the inside, Lindgren comes close to Hancock. Oh. So tight there. And Chris Holder's going to try and take up the challenge. But Hancock has the lead. It was a textbook start. Lindgren throws the bike towards Holder. My goodness, that was tough. But <laughs> Hancock has responded again just when it mattered. Holder's going to have a go, though. He is indeed. Holder's got speed in second place. Freddie Lindgren, crikey. I thought he was just going to ride straight in the floor. Chris Holder, unfortunately, that didn't happen. Hancock responding brilliantly. He will regain the lead in the championship and he's beginning to pull away out in front. Good speedway from the Americans showing great composure, great character, a lot to go. Hancock in complete control. He certainly is. Greg Hancock kicking on down the back straight and he's making it look easy here. He's going to go through the 100-point barrier, make it 102 points in the Grand Prix series for Greg Hancock. In his 199th Grand Prix, the 200th Grand Prix in history tonight. And that was a fantastic ride from Hancock once again when the pressure was on. And Lindgren had a go on Holder, threw everything at him. Holder's nerve was held superbly. Lindgren third. But what a performance from Greg Hancock. He can look forward to the semi finals now as well. Pressure on Woffenden in heat 17 now to keep his hopes alive tonight. Hancock, Holder, Lindgren, Lindgren. Back. This is how it looks. Doyle head and shoulders of the rest. Pavlitsky on nine, and you have Hancock and Everson on eight points apiece. Well, once again, Greg Hancock uh, showing us why he's won the World Championship three times and why he is uh, leading the championship chase uh, once again. It was level pegging with Doyle coming into this race, both on 99 World Championship points, but tight uh, down the back straight with Lindgren there on the inside. Holder then follows Hancock through in turns three. Antonio Limbach once again missing out here, and uh, he'll be frustrated with that, but uh, Hancock under pressure, failing to score in his opening ride, has picked up Oh, eight points from the next three, so that is a terrific effort from the American. 
Holder there in second place around the outside. He'll be tough with that. Not easy to score points from gate four. So two points to his name. And Holder is on seven points from four rides and in the top eight. But right now, Jason Doyle is in a class of his own. After four rides, he's unbeaten and he's three points clear on tonight's score in front of everybody else. Greg Hancock, 102, Jason Doyle, 99, Woffenden, 93, and Chris Holder's on 84. But that is simply superb from the old master, Greg Hancock. He's got one more race to come before the semi-finals tonight. He's off gate four in heat number 19. And we're going to hear some interviews very soon from down in the pits as we have the four races to go to decide the semi-finalists. Maximum man, Jason Doyle, is it our man, Steve Brandon? Jason, you're making it look very easy. I'm sure it's not. No, mate. I'm uh, trying to make some good starts. Uh, it's working at the moment, but uh, I've got a hard one in uh, off gate three, the next one. So we'll see what happens. Uh, made it in the semis. That's what we're doing, just picking some points up. Uh, we just uh, try a little, a uh, few little things in this next race, uh, ready for the semis. We need to try to get a little bit more speed off the corners, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. It must be nice, though, when you go to the start, knowing that man and machine are all working very well. Yeah, it definitely is. But uh, I think uh, my team's doing a great job. It's not just not me twisting the throttle. Though. They're working endlessly, doing some late nights, and, uh, and the bikes are superb. One of the things you're obviously learning, you're already looking at what you can do to be quicker in the semis. That's a great sign. Yeah, it's nice to just uh, know that you're going to make the semis. We, we work on nine points, makes the semis. Uh, this year in the Grand Prix, it's, a, it's very difficult. So, yeah, we're just going to try some uh, little little tinkering, we call it, to uh, get a bit more speed. And, uh, I know that there's a world champion that stayed through the whole year. At one point for a couple of races, you actually level with Greg. Yeah, we don't look at that at the moment, mate, but uh, it keeps popping up on the screen, so it uh, keeps making me smile, but I know it's a long way. Right, stop looking, keep racing, thanks. Thank you. Well, he's riding beautifully and, uh, you know, complimenting his team. It is a team effort and we, we've we seen them on um, a couple of occasions on screen this evening and the boys uh, in the background quite clearly are providing a, an excellent motorbike. His engine tuner also, Fleming Graveson, is uh, providing an awful lot of engines to an awful lot of riders right now, but the ones that are bolted in Jason Doyle's bikes are producing exactly what's required. And uh, he's looking like a rider that probably, right now, could, um, could the only man that can beat him is himself. So, yeah, good stuff from Doyle. Let's hear from Greg Hancock now with Steve Brandon. Greg, we spoke after your first tough ride. You've bounced back extremely well from there with eight points. Yeah, so far so good. A couple of good starts, you know, and you can, you can pretty much see today that starting really is the name of the game. And uh, it is like that in speed over. Today's a little more important. Just between you and me, what sort of things are you changing to get the bike hook up much better than it did in the first one? You're asking the wrong guy, you know. I, those guys are the ones that make me fast, you know, and they, when they make the bike work, all I got to do is point it. And uh, so far, the changes that they're making is working, and uh, I'm just trying to point it. So, so right now, championship race wide open, but you're comfortable what you got machinery-wise for the end of the meeting? Yeah, I'm comfortable. Things feel like it's going like that, and we're making small adjustments all the time. But, uh, you know, name of the game, that's race. And thanks to Mauer for backing me in this race. Thanks a lot, you guys. Uh, a question, a man with a lot of experience, every Grand Prix track you've been to. This one, is it hard to get the setup dialed in 100% right? Well, you know, I came here when this place opened way, 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 way back and uh, been here one or two other times, but it is. It's different than it was when I came last time, and, uh, you know, the, the, the shape of the track, the size of the track, the kind of material, it's all different than what we ride every day, but that's the name of the game. It's a challenge. Thank you very much. That's, that's a brilliant point there, you know, Nigel, because a championship is not won on it, uh, the, the same track each time. And this is uh, what's presented to those 16 riders tonight, and they have to be able to cope with that. And it is different. The shape of the track, the way it's flat, the material is not what you normally come across in the other leagues. So it does, uh, it does present a different task for the riders and the team. So, you know, uh, Hancock has responded brilliantly to that after failing to score in his opening ride. So a little bit more track grading continues here ahead of our final four heats before the semi-finals. And Niels Christian Everson is with our man Steve Brandon. There was no practice yesterday, you looked at the draw with lots of outside gates, but you're making it work. So far so good, but um, yeah, um, yeah, I feel, I feel good, I feel good, I feel, uh, feel pretty good out there. My case has been sort of okay, a few good ones, a few not so good ones, but um, yeah, I feel back to my old self and uh, I'm happy about that. A 
Obviously. It's a frustrating start when you're a rider in a Grand Prix like this. Is it hard to sort of regather the thoughts and just put that behind you? Of course, the way the season has been going, uh, it's been hard work and um, I, haven't, I haven't been able to really find myself. And, uh, you know, to, to sort of run a last uh, or get an exclusion at first, it's not, it's not the best start, but, you know, um, I managed to turn things around and uh, now I had two wins on my belt and, uh, and one race to go. And how much confidence, you just mentioned it, how much confidence do you take from the race wins? Oh, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, it's always nice to win the races and, uh, and feel what you're doing is right. And, uh, you know, it's just, um, yeah, what can you say? It is, it is cool to my confidence. The more race you win, the better you feel. And uh, that's how it is. Good luck next one. Yeah. Well, he's bounced back well tonight because... He's won his last two rides uh, from gate four. And when the draw comes and you get two gate fours here, that is a, well, your heart might just sink a little. But he's managed to pick up two heat wins there, Nigel. He's got gate three in his last ride, so he still needs to keep pushing on. But he's got eight points to his name from four rides, including an exclusion. So um, good to see Nils having a, a better evening. Very much so. You don't become a bad rider overnight, Kelf, do you? I think he's had a combination of some bad luck and um, you know it's it's just not been his year and no I think he changed his plans at the beginning of the year as well and I don't think that's helped him he's had some issues with equipment but that's normally part of the game championship table now with Hancock on 102 three points in front of Doyle on 99 Wiffenden's got work to do he's under pressure right now back on 93 and Holder steady away on 84 top three pulling away Yep, and uh, here we see the top eight. Lim back on 67 now. Again, it's been a disappointing night for Antonio with only three points. Seven clear of Nicky Pedersen, and there are three rounds remaining after tonight to book your top eight spot. Freddie Lindgren doesn't need to, because he's a qualifier from the Grand Prix Challenge. Absolutely, and Niels Christian Everson there, who we've just been chatting to, moving on to 54, well outside the top eight. Um, I don't think he can think about that too much. He just needs to just keep winning races and let the points take care of themselves. If he shows strongly in the last rounds, he must have a chance of a, of a pick for, the, for next year if he finishes outside the top eight. Plenty of water and track grading going on again. And uh, it's um, just delaying proceedings a little bit again. But um, no, Hancock just coming down to see the track. Um, He's keeping an eye on it. Phil Morris there. I'd, I get a feeling Phil wasn't that happy to see that much water going on that time. He was quite frustrated with the truck driver. And um, the truck driver seemed to have a, um, a mind of his own, but there we are. Well, again, this is uh, more grading than we've had. Um, the longer grading breaks than we've had in previous rounds of the World Championship. Ty Wuffenden goes off gate four here and needs points to extend his evening, you feel. Heat number 17 and the riders preparing to be pushed off here. Ready for action in Tetero for heat number 17. It's on the way. So the riders make their way down out of pit lane. I'm uh, heat number 17 here. Chris Holder, the first to emerge. World Championship points. Hancock at 102, Doyle 99. Now, Woofenden knows that the two above him, Doyle and Hancock, will be in the semi-finals tonight. So it's vital that Woofenden gets a couple of points from this race, Kelvin, just to ensure that his night continues and he doesn't allow the top two to pull too clear. Dead right. So Woofenden, the champion under pressure. Got to show some uh, championship form here. Going from the outside, not easy. And he's got Chris Holder, who's looking good. He goes off gate three. Zagar struggling. Smolinski off the inside. Cannot be discounted. So the Wiffenden needs to produce something pretty special this time. Certainly does. Heat number 17 is coming up, and it's a big race here in Tetero, Germany.
Heat number 17 then, Martin Smolinski, the German wild card off the inside in red. Mati Zegar goes off gate two in blue, it's been a poor night for the Slovenian. Chris Holder goes off gate number three in white. And off the outside is the reigning champion, Ty Wuffenden. And you do feel if he doesn't score here, his grip on the title could be about to just loosen with Doyle and Hancock having more races to come. Absolutely, so the champion's under pressure. He's got gate four, we've just had a track grade. Interesting to see if he can actually benefit from that because the inside run has actually been quite slippery after the track grade. Smolinski's on the inside gate, so you can't discount him. He won heat one from there. Could he finish with a win here and deny the champion another win? Two points, a minimum, I would think, for Wuffenden to ensure that he uh, stays in tonight's meeting. Hold us to spray this all with dirt. Thanks very much, Chris. We're that <laughs> close to the action. He just ripped the bike up, threw shale all over the commentary position. Settling down, here we go. Yep, here we go indeed. Heat number 17, a big one for What a start that is from Smolinski on the inside. Wuffenden needs a big run around the outside now. He's going to switch on the inside on Holder. That's a clever move from Wuffenden. And he needs to stay there because that will put him on to nine points. And that surely would be enough for a place in the semi-finals. The lead is with Smolinski. Second is Wuffenden. Third is Chris Holder ahead of Matty Zegar. Well, the German Smolinski takes full advantage of the inside gate that time. What a move from the world champion. Really has to pull out all the stops there to get the better of Holder. Charged up the inside. Wuffenden's riding hard here. He knows the pressure's on. He knows that Wuffenden, he knows that Doyle and Hancock, excuse me, are pulling away the top of the table. And Smolinski goes. Smolinski out in front, riding a great race. The German flags are flying again down that back straight. What a performance from Martin Smolinski, the wild card. Heat number 17, it's a German win for Martin Smolinski. Ty Wuffenden was second, and third was Chris Holder. Matty Zegar's night is over in that outing, and Smolinski celebrates down the back straight. But that was a crucial piece of work from Ty Wuffenden. Really, a type of ride that can keep your title hopes alive, because he moves on to nine points now. But Smolinski is doing a lap of honour and playing to the crowd and really soaking up the atmosphere yeah. and the celebrations down the back straight. Well, great ride. He's won both his races from the inside gate. Fabulous uh, reception for Martin Smolinski. Not sure we're going to see him again, and that's quite possibly why he's milking this. But uh, good to see him back on the Grand Prix stage in front of a home crowd. And he's given them two heat wins to celebrate. And they've royally enjoyed that, but you're right. That was a strong ride from Wuffenden under huge pressure. He had to make that forceful move early in the race to get himself into second place. Yeah, Wuffenden moves on to nine points with that second spot. That's vital. Chris Holder third moves him on to eight. He could have done with something a little bit better than that, but might just get in there on countback. We'll see over the next three heats how that emerges. But Wuffenden looking good for the semi-finals now with a nine-point haul and that will extend his evening and keep him in with a chance of maybe clawing some points back on the top two. So he made a good start here, but then got pushed wide because Zagar got a nudge off Smolinski, and he goes awfully wide in the first corner. Holder there, but look at the move now. Had to do it early. Up the inside, just in the second place. Holder then on the uh, slippery part of the track, just pulls a big locker and manages to hang on to third place again from the tapes. Smolinski gets in there on the inside. We're looking at the world champion on the outside. He then weighs it up, makes that move up the inside of Chris Holder. Takes Holder by surprise, in actual fact. Look at Holder. He's struggling to stay upright there. So slippery going into turn three. But German, Smolinski out in front, rides a strong race, delights the home crowd. Brilliant stuff from him. Was that clever from Wuffenden, the way he was just studying where Holder was and looking at his every could see move? Him, couldn't you? could see him looking over his shoulder, weighing it up. Smart move, a move that he needed to do under immense pressure. Smolinski, though, he's enjoyed his night. Don't think we'll see him again. Might do, might do, but unlikely. But there's certainly, he's, uh, he's made his point. He's won a couple of races and he's enjoyed himself. Well, if it does go down to count back, seven points, he's got two race wins.
but as you say, there's three heats to go. Plenty of opportunity for boys behind, and Jepsen Jensen, Harris, Pedersen, Lindgren all on five. So um, here we go. Heat number 18. Maybe see Smolinski again. Might do. Lindgren off the inside. Kilman goes off gate two. Jason Boyle, the only unbeaten man in this German Speedway Grand Prix tonight. Gate three. And Bartosz Marslik needs points here off the outside gate. Yeah, he's on seven. He needs at least one. Two would be useful. Uh, a win for Lindgren, you know. He might just creep in. He's on five. Kilman struggling. Doyle unbeaten. Can Doyle be beaten? You know, he just doesn't look like he could be. But Lindgren on the inside might have half a chance. This is heat number 18 in Tesoro. What a start from Lindgren. That is in the red lights are on straight away. Yeah. The red lights are on straight away. Well, I thought it was a good start, but we'll have to see it again. Very close. Chris Gardell didn't did agree. It looked like uh, Lindgren sort of had a bit of a roller there. And I think he's the reason we're coming back. I didn't quite catch that. Here we see, yeah, it does go a fraction early, but it's very, very close, very tight. Marginal. Very marginal. Was it just not a perfect start? Yes. You could, you could label it as that. You could label it as that, and slightly unfortunate, possibly not to get away with it, but it did look like he anticipated it a little bit, and Gardell, Krista Gardell put uh, the red lights on. Yeah, they went on very quickly, to he be needs fair, to win. Gardell. He knows he does, that. Yeah. He does need a win. Um, the only rider riding on the GTR engines made in Switzerland, Marcel Gerhard there on the right-hand side, the man who makes the engine. And as a consequence of that move, actually, Freddie, Freddie Lindgren has had a good year. Yeah, and um, even though he's got his place secure for next year, Kel, um, Lindgren's a competitor. Yeah. He won't rest easy, will he? No, not at all. And this is really an opportunity for putting himself in the shop window. And, uh, you know, he's got sponsorship to think about. Spoke to him briefly. He said, I've got all winter now. It's great to be able to really work hard on his plans for next season and generate as many funds and as big a budget as he can to be able to give himself an opportunity to really push for a medal next year. So he's on the inside and he's desperate for a win. A win really is all he can have if he wants a, an outside chance of the semi final. Wonderful turnout here in Tetero tonight. It's a, a packed house, banking across the first and second turns, grass banking up there, it's quite high as well. Fantastic atmosphere, seating down the back straight. There's a little bit of seating on the home straight here as well, going into turn one. Lindgren, Kilderman, Doyle and Schmarschlick is the lineup for this heat number 18. Big race coming up here. Can Doyle make it 15 points out of 15? Going into the semi-finals here in Tetano. A reminder, we move on to Stockholm in Sweden in two weeks' time. That's going to be a terrific meeting as well at the Friends Arena. Yeah. And uh, this is heat number 18, second time around. Let's go again. Here we go. has got there now what can Freddie Lindgren do and Doyle has gone to the back Jason Doyle's relegated to the back the lead here is with a man in blue Peter Kilman where has he found this from the battle is on now it's hard to come the inside but Lindgren holds the line Doyle is going to have to go high but there's not a lot of dirt there to really get some drive and Doyle for the first time tonight is going to be beaten here in heat number 18 yeah got out battle in the first corner to try and get to the front, but Peter Gilderman made a fantastic start out of gate two. Smarsley coming on strong, now gets himself in the second place. Crikey, oh. that was a really strong move from Smarsley. Lingwood now back around the edge. slams the ball. Doyle's not going to score here. He's out of the points, and Peter Gilderman, where's this come from? This is a big win for Peter Kilman. He'll only finish on six points, but that'll boost him going to Stockholm. Holds out Smarslik, Lindgren third, and Jason Doyle filled in with dirt. Can't see where he's going. He's actually taken his goggles off uh, coming out of the turn, fourth turn because he cannot see where he's going. Well, that wasn't the result we were expecting. Not at all. Not at all. Peter Kilman coming up with a, an unexpected win there, and Jason Doyle failing to score. So he has an added to the 99 points that he had prior to Heat 18. 
Good ride from Kittleman and Smarslick. Action, big action in second place. Yeah, that was a big second spot for Smarslick because uh, that puts him on tonight now. Lindgren, uh, Freddie Lindgren. Um, has uh, not done it up uh, this evening, six points for him. Doyle on 12, Smarslick on nine, and Smolinski hanging on in there in eighth spot on seven points. Heat number 19 is coming next. Kilderman and uh, Lindgren make their way back. Doyle knows he'll be back for the semi-finals, though. Yeah, disappointing, oh, you know, winning all the time, and then suddenly doesn't get off gate three, finds himself blocked there completely blocked out by Freddie Lindgren and Peter Kilderman as they come out of the first corner down the back straight. Smarslick then really forceful move here early in the race up the inside to get the better of Freddie Lindgren. It's tight between Freddie Lindgren and uh, Smarslick for a lap or two. And then uh, Smarslick gets the better of the Swedish man and charges up the inside here. But Peter Kilderman has had a really rough run of form lately. He was charging out in front, and he'll be pleased with that. Hasn't been uh, going his way, and picks up uh, a rare win for the Danish man, in truth. But Smarslick was action-packed, worked really hard for those two points. Yeah, it was a good ride from Smarslick, particularly the way he charged hard into that third turn and then had oh, to lock up Yeah, he did. like it was a small track. Yeah, he did. He had to really work hard. Peter Kilderman can't believe it. Where did that come from? Finally get a... couldn't buy a win, could he? and uh, comes up with a three points in his last ride, but we won't see him again. Well, here, Nicky Pedersen is still having some attention to his bike, and there's 30 seconds remaining. Here he comes. So Pedersen will join the rest of the boys at the start line here, Matt Zianowski, Chris Harris, and Greg Hancock. And now, an opportunity for Hancock. If he can win this race, all of a sudden, Kel, will be six clear in the World Championship. Yeah, you know, Doyle just slipping up there. You know that he's safely into the semi-finals, but I said he'd be disappointed because he realises that at every opportunity is an opportunity to push for the world title. Hancock, can he respond? He's off the outside on eight points. Here we go then, heat number 19. Can Hancock get the win off that outside gate? Nicky Pedersen is there in blue. Hancock's going to go wide, but Pedersen will take him wide. Hancock is now struggling here as he charges up third place. Second place in white is Chris Harris. Hancock's going to try the inside run. Lovely move from Greg Hancock. Nicky Pedersen the leader from Greg Hancock in second. Six world titles between them in the front two here. Harris chasing after Hancock now. Yeah, great stuff from Nicky Pedersen. A few last-minute adjustments seem to have paid off because he came out against them. Then slammed the door front in front of Hancock and he got himself to the front, but Hancock is now looking good. He went back to third place, got the better of uh, Harris, but keep your eyes on Greg Hancock. He's coming on strong in second place. Pedersen Hancock scores a move! Greg Hancock charges up the inside! Kelvin, you said earlier, that's the race of a champion! I say this is definitely the race <laughs> of a champion! He's just passed Nicky Pedersen! What a run! from Greg Hancock. That is simply, simply stunning from Greg Hancock. Six clear now in the world title race. Superb ride from Greg Hancock. He got battled out of it in the early part of the race. Went up the inside of Harris and then had more speed than Pedersen. Got to the front. What a ride from Hancock. He's not out of this. He's now stretched the lead back to six points. Showing great resolve. Superb stuff from the 46-year-old American. <laughs> what a result in heat number 19 for Hancock. Brilliant ride. Nicky Pedersen probably can't believe it. Because Nicky Pedersen... He's shaking his head when he went back in, points. wasn't he? Yeah. This is the semi-finals. Uh, yep, yeah, that may well have cost him a spot in the semi-finals. Indeed, it probably will, because smolinski has got two wins to his name anyway. It's all really about what... Um, Jepsen Jensen. Yep, Jepsen Jensen does in the next one. But that is, uh, well... <sighs> I don't know what to say. Well, it's stunning. <laughs> it's simply stunning because he's on the outside here. The tapes go up. Pedersen makes a really good fist of it from gate two. Gets there. He's aware that Hancock is on the outside of him. Allows the bike to go across. Up the inside comes Chris Harris. And at this stage, Hancock is in trouble. He really is. He's back in third place and having to work overtime. We look at the start again. Pedersen gets there in front, slams the door shut in front of Hancock, who just has to kill his momentum momentarily. 
And then Harris is there. Now, later on in the race, he's got to second place. Up the inside of Nicky Pedersen, and as sweet as you like, with a lap to go as they go into the last lap, he fires himself to the front. That was a classy, classy ride from the championship leader. 46 years of age, riding like a teenager. That was such a cool ride from him. Brilliant stuff. Well, as I said, Kelvin, you mentioned it earlier, it's the ride of a champion. You said that earlier. Yeah. And that definitely was. Yeah, summed it up brilliantly. 105 points to 99, six points out in front. Woofenden fighting hard, holding back in 85. But that man, relaxed, riding beautifully after a disappointing opening ride. What a way to bounce back. Yeah, stunning. And it was only a matter of, well, 10, 15 minutes ago, we were shouting and screaming about the fact that Doyle had gone level with him on 99. Dead right. Here we go, heat number 20. Piotr Pavlitsky off the inside. He's had a good night after touching the tapes on his first one. Now, can Michael Jepsen Jensen get a second spot here and elevate himself, elevate himself into the semi-finals? Niels Christian Iverson off three. And off the outside is Antonio Limbach. Martin Smolinski is on seven points, currently in eighth place, and has two races to his name. He could make the semis here. Heat number 20. Great start from Jensen Jensen off gate number two. He's got the drop on Piotr Pavlitsky. Pavlitsky, though, tries the inside run. Has he got the speed? Yes, he has, and Limbach! Oh, oh that's awfully tight! Crikey, how on earth did they stay upright? Jensen initially had made a terrific start, but then got out battled that. That was a very, very brave move for Antonio Limbach, but that could smell um, disaster for Jepsen Jensen. And we may well see Martin Smolinski again. Yes, very much so. Martin Smolinski is on the verge, on the uh, countback, you feel here, of making a semi final spot with two race wins, and he's only watching on from the pits. He's already given a lap of honor as if to say his farewell to the Tetero crowd, but he could be back again. Antonio Lindback is looking super quick down the back straight, and what a move it was as well from Lindback. Oh. He's going to take the checkered flag, Pavlitsky is going to get second here, and Jepsen Jensen ends up in third spot. What a race from Antonio Lindback. He does it occasionally, but not often enough. No, he was uh, in devastating form earlier in the summer, but it's uh, just left him momentarily, but crikey, what a move that was. Just allowed the bike to steam up the inside down the back straight on the opening lap. Martin Smolinski, though, well, looks like we're going to see him in the semi-finals, but Antonio Limbach finishes with a three-point hole. Good ride. Yep, Limbach, Pavlitsky, Jepsen, Jensen and Everson, the finishing order there in heat number 20. And we have the semi-finals to come, and it does look like the wild card will be out again in the semi-finals. Yeah, well, Antonio Limbach will be um, pleased that he's won a race, but he'll be frustrated with his night's work because he hasn't managed to make the semi-finals. Jepsen Jensen makes a good fist of it initially, but he finds himself in no man's land there. And look at that, that's a stunning move. I tell you what, I don't really know how they didn't come down there. I thought he was going to collect Pavlitsky on the way through here. Chopping back from the inside. Oh! Rocky, that is so close as I go down the straight there, Everson initially, and then up the inside of Pavlitsky. It was, well, I just had to hold my breath here. Now, there, Pavlitsky's clever, you know. If he'd laid it down, he would have gone down, and Antonio Limbach probably would have been excluded for that. They stay upright, he stays out in front, and the Swedish boy picks up a rare win, and one that he'll hope he can kick on from. Jepsen Jensen will miss out on the semi-finals because he finishes third. And Martin Smolinski will just have to gather himself, Nigel, because <laughs> we will see him at least once again. He said his farewells once. He has. Did a lap of honour. It was the quickest retirement and comeback we've well, seen. He can do another one, can't he? <laughs> he can. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't put it past Smolinski winning the Grand Prix from here. What a story that would be. Um, Semi-finals and the final to come. Don't miss it. This is, uh, well, absolutely vital. Uh, on the World Championship uh, scene, of course, with... Yeah. Uh, so it's been a massive night. Doyle has been tremendous, but Hancock still 
finds himself six clear in the yeah. title race. And it's done remarkably well. And that just shows you with Dahl slipping up in his fifth ride. It's far from disastrous, but all of a sudden, Hancock's only a point behind him tonight and has actually been able to keep that six-point lead going into the semi-finals. And that is down to Hancock battling away and responding so brilliantly after a disappointing start. Pavlitsky's also the same. Wuffenden has really had to work overtime for his nine points. Yep, Doyle gets first pick of gate positions then. Hancock 11, Pavlitsky 11. And that's how it looks with Wuffenden, Smarslick, Everson Holder and confirmation. Martin Smolinski makes the semi-finals as the wild card. Well, you could say it's a little fortunate, but the fact is that he won two races when he had gate one. He won in heat one and he won his last ride off of heat one in heat 17. So well done to Martin and the Germans will be after sort of saying goodbye to him tonight. Uh, they'll be saying hello to him very shortly. Gate wins the gate stats. Let's have a look at this. It's just evened up a bit and all of a sudden the outside gate, which he couldn't buy a win from earlier on, has uh, become the favoured gate. So not an easy choice in truth for the semi-finals, but I know if I was in the semi-final and I had the first pick, I think I'd go gate one. Well, the crowd have just been told that Martin Smolinski makes it into the semi-finals. Yeah, don't go home yet. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he's going to come out again. He's a firm fan favourite. He works hard at that, Martin. He comes across as a public character, and there's no doubt that um, uh, they get right behind their own here. And uh, he has delighted them on a couple of occasions this evening where he wins. And who knows, if he gets uh, half a break in the semi-final, he has the speed to win. He's won two heats already. Yep, packed crowd here. Enjoying themselves. Now we get the all-important picks of gate positions for the semi-finals. Let's head down to the pits and Steve Brandon. Thank you, Nigel. Yes, the riders are all lined up here, ready for the draw for semi-final one. Jason Doyle is coming forward to take his pick now. So Jason's going to go straight to gate one in red. Probably no surprises there. Ty Wolfenden up next, battling with his sore thumb from Monday's crash at Wolverhampton. He's got a little bit of thinking to do, but he's going to go for the outside. So Ty Wolfenden's going to be in yellow. Nils Christian Everson, good middle to the meeting, poor start and poor finish, but he's going to come up and he's going to take gate two in blue. And Chris Holder with Buckley's choice is going to take gate one and you saw what he thought about that in white uh, gate three in white sorry so uh just a quick recap of the draw for semi-final one jason doyle will go in red Nils christian everson in blue chris holder in white and ty wolfenden in yellow so next next we've got greg hancock coming forward to take his pick in semi-final two first pick in that one oh greg's going to go out of gate two in blue Surprise choice for the veteran American. Piotr Pavlitsky's now got a bit of head scratching to do. He's going to come forward and make his pick as the second choice in the second semi final. He is going to go to the outside and go in yellow, not black, but he's going in a yellow helmet colour. Pavlitsky's up next. Might be a little bonus for Bartosz. He's going to have gate one in red. And Martin Smolinski, who snuck in, wild card, local favourite, he is going to go out of gate three in white. So just to recap for semi-final two, Bartosz Marslik in red, Greg Hancock in blue, Martin Smolinski the wild card in white, and Piotr Pavlitsky in yellow. Greg Hancock taking gate two, your thoughts? Interesting that. I think Bartosz Marslik will be delighted. Uh, getting third pick and getting gate one, which is the second best gate on the stats. Doesn't guarantee you uh, a semi-final slot, but he won't be unhappy with that. Uh, Pavlitsky going for the outside, but Greg, let's have a look back when he won his last races heat 19 he won from gate four but he came through the traffic there he won in heat he won out of gate two in heat 16 nigel so maybe that's part of his thinking but yeah it is uh, potentially a risky strategy yep very much so so uh, the semi-finals to come and it is shaping up nicely here in tetero so uh, three heats to go Semi-final one will be upon us very shortly indeed. And uh, Jason Doyle, four wins, but still, we know it doesn't guarantee you much. Because apart from a semi-final place, there's no guarantee he's going to kick on and win this meeting. No, but he's on a much better start now, isn't he, Nige? He is. Ty looks pretty um, relaxed. 
Uh, Peter Carlson there in alongside him, just giving him a pep talk prior to him coming out for the first semi-final. He's got uh, he's got the outside gate, and that's been working well. Ty hasn't been quite at his best, but he's um, he's hanging on in there, isn't he? He's hanging in there because this man is really putting pressure on everybody. Hancock has responded terrifically well, but Holder now, excuse me, Doyle, Jason Doyle, he will be now focusing on trying to pick up at least first or second to keep himself in with a shout of a win tonight and keep those championship, world championship points rolling in. Yep, well... And a real bonus for the German supporters tonight to see Smolinski out again. And, um, well, massive turnout here in Tetero tonight. Queues a mile long building up, what, two or three hours before the meeting here. And we've got the semi-finals to come. The business end in Tetero is coming up. The riders put their goggles on and they'll be pushed off shortly. Well, riders now just waiting uh, for the first semi-final for them to be released. The gate is open at the bottom. Championship uh, points are 105 for Hancock, six in front of Doyle. Woofenden back in 95, and Doyle and Woofenden out in the first semi-final. And as is Chris Holder in actual fact, so second, third, and fourth going head-to-head -head here in heat and semi-final number one. Holder has battled hard, but uh, not been quite at his best. Doyle has been brilliant up until his last ride, but still gets the first pick for the semi-finals. Tapes aren't down. They seem to have gone to sleep here on the start line. They're only just pulling the tapes down now. <laughs> but uh, hopefully that they, they won't be uh, getting in the way. But riders now beginning to get ready for this uh, first semi, and it's a terrific lineup. Certainly is. Can't wait for this. Heat number 21, the first semi-final here in Tetero. The first time the Grand Prix has been here. And what a semi-final lineup it is. A couple of world champions and a man who has won four of his five heats here tonight. The first semi-final is on the way very shortly. Here's the lineup then. What a lineup it is as well. It's off the inside. Jason Doyle in red. 12 points to his name. Niels Christian Everson goes off gate two in blue. Chris Holder gate three. And Ty Woffenden knows he has to get into the first two here to keep his night going. And just hang on to the coattails of Doyle and Hancock in the title and race. That's what he's doing right now. Now nine points to his name. He's just about hanging on in there. Needs to because Doyle has been devastating. His form in recent weeks has been extraordinary. He's won two Grand Prix this season. Really has laid down a marker to the rest of the pack. He goes off the inside. Everson's done remarkably well. Holder's hanging in there as well. Goes off gate three. The champion, Woofenden, from the outside. Gate four in the latter races has improved. The gate stats give it to be the best starting position. Woofenden's right there now. Here we go. First semi-final in Chateau. Inside gate, Wuffenden has been squeezed out, charging up the inside is Everson in blue. What a move from Niels Christian Everson, and here comes Wuffenden as well, charging hard. Oh, and Wuffenden locks the bike up, but Doyle comes around the outside now. Doyle working hard again here. Wuffenden has come through into third place, has got the better of Holder. Now Wuffenden is going to try and challenge Doyle. Wuffenden wheel to wheel, but Doyle gets the speed. The lead though is with Niels Christian Everson, who has really come good here. Fabulous ride from Niels Christian Everson. And turned on the start and this is much more like it for Everson. Wiffington momentarily going to the back. All of a sudden tonight is not working out for the world champion. Doyle in second place looking like he's going to go to the final and the world champion's going to miss out. Everson in front though with less than a lap to go. He's riding brilliantly. Very much so. Niels Christian Everson has saved his best till last. What a performance from the Dane. Neil 
Doyle's Christian Everson makes the final. So does Jason Doyle. Ty Wolfenden is out with third. And Chris Holder's night comes to an end as well. But what a ride from Niels Christian Everson. Magnificent display. Fantastic stuff from Niels Christian Everson. He's had an awfully tough season this year. Really has found it tough to win races. And he's won three this evening after such a disappointing start. He's had two zeros, and uh, he's had three wins in a second place, and he wins semi-final number one. Brilliant. Yep, just to confirm that, Everson the winner with Jason Doyle second, Woffenden third there, and Chris Holder at the back. So Woffenden's going round and taking a round of applause as the reigning champion here, clapping the crowd as well, showing his appreciation for their support. And um, why not as well? Good to see from the reigning champion this. Yeah, this is... Uh... This is great from Ty, but got to say that he's found it tough tonight. And you just sense that he really needed to be in there, but uh, didn't make the final. But Niels Christian Everson does because he rides very strongly here to get the better of the opposition. Initially, uh, Doyle makes a great start, runs wide, opens the door, and Everson is in the right place. Gate four doesn't work so well for the champion, doesn't get there. With Doyle running so wide in the first corner, that's what leaves the, all this racing room. They haven't done any track prep here. They've left the track alone, no water, no track grade, so the inside works well there, and the dirt on the outside may be just a little bit too wide. And Woofenden working hard there, with Holder and Woofenden swapping places, but neither of those two boys we will see again. Doyle in the final. And uh, a surprise this evening with Niels Christian Everson bouncing back to top form. Yep, second semi-final coming up and no doubt who the biggest cheer is for here. Martin Smolinski is out. Well done, Niels Christian Everson. Fantastic effort. I said earlier on tonight, you don't become a bad rider overnight. And uh, when you bear in mind what happened early on where Niels actually was excluded he, he's for bringing ride. down Freddie Lindgren first ride yeah. yeah and I said is that summing up Niels Everson's season and all of a sudden he's in the final what do we know yeah not too much um, <laughs> thanks <laughs> well tonight we certainly he turned it around in terrific style and he's got another vital race to come but semi-final number two the lineup once again is mouth watering night it is. It's Bartosz Marslik off the inside with Greg Hancock off two. Martin Smolinski off three. And Piotr Pavlitsky is going off the outside here. This is the second semi final. Terrific lineup. Can Smolinski make it to the final for a bit of a fairy tale off gate three? It would be a fairy tale. And uh, he won two races off the inside gate. Found it difficult off the other gates, but uh, he's got gate three. Smarslik on the inside has been action-packed, and I think he probably feels quite comfortable there. Slightly surprised that Greg didn't go for the inside, but feels comfortable coming out of gate two. Pavlitsky will be a threat also from the outside. Here we go. Semi-final two in Tretano. Magnificent start, and now charging through into second is Bartosz Marslik. But the man in yellow, Piotr Pavlitsky, is having a go. We're going to see these young Poles having a go again. Hancock leading the way. Smarslik is in second, and Piotr Pavlitsky is third with Smolinski at the back. Well, what do I know? I thought that was a risky strategy going out of gate two, and Hancock absolutely makes a brilliant start from there, and it's comfortable in front. Smarslik in second place with Pavlitsky back in third and the crowd favourite, the wild card, Smolinski out the back. Hancock, well, he is just fabulous, isn't he? He's ridden supremely well to get to this point and he's going to cruise through to the final. Well, it might be too early to say this, but in reality, Greg Hancock is only three rounds away from a, a fourth World Speedway title. It's in his hands. He's into the final in Tetano. So is Bartosz Marslik. And a battle for third. Crowd thinks Smolinski got it on the line. He's not going to make the final, but he had a real go towards the end, Smolinski. He's left every minute of it. But what about that from Hancock and Smarslik into the final here in Tetano? But what about the battle for third? Has the German Smolinski got it on the line? Yes, he has. Yeah, great stuff. Pavlitsky got it all wrong there, killed all his momentum on the inside. And uh, the German fans will be pleased with that. Smolinski has done a good job for them. 
with Greg Hancock. There we hit. We see another farewell tonight. That's the second one. <laughs> and Martin making the most of it. He's got his helmet off. Big smiles. Thanks very much for coming. And I'll tell you what, plenty of them have come this evening. Superb. Superb stuff. Greg Hancock, what can you say? You know, he has been just terrific. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful effort from Martin Smolinski. And what a lineup for the final we have. Here's the semi final result. Semi final two Hancock from Smarslik. We are going to have a final of Everson, Doyle, Hancock, and Smarslik. And Hancock level with Doyle on 14 now on the night. Well, Martin's still doing it. He doesn't want to go home, does he? And uh, he's just showboating in front of the home crowd. And uh, they are chuffed to bits. He is making the very most of this. And who knows, we may see him back in the Grand Prix series next year. We see the replays again. And Hancock, what a start. He absolutely nailed that. That was a brilliant start out of gate two. Thought it was a risky strategy, but he knew far more than me because he made it look very easy. Absolutely flew away from the tapes. Smart Slick, I think he does benefit from having the inside gate. It's nip and tuck between um, uh, Smart Slick and Pavlitsky in the early part of the race, but the man in the red helmet color comes through fairly comfortably into second place. And Martin Smolinski coming through at the death certainly delights the home crowd. Good action between the two poles in the early part of the race. Look at that dirt then flying off his bike. Greg Hancock, though, terrific from him. You could still uh, see him winning the tonight, couldn't you, Hancock? Oh, very much so. More than capable. Yep, more than capable indeed. And uh, look at that for a crowd here. And uh, I think they'll go away knowing that they've enjoyed it. And uh, it was their ambition to have a Grand Prix here, Kelv. Indeed, that it was. It's been fulfilled here tonight. It was. It was a dream of theirs. When they opened it, they said immediately, we will have a Grand Prix here. Uh, I didn't think for one minute it would ever happen, but it has. And the turnout um, and the atmosphere has been terrific. Uh, I think the track could be improved a little bit, but to all intents and purposes, it's been a very good Grand Prix. And, and, of course, with the home rider coming through to the semi-finals, winning a couple of races, that's been an added bonus for them. Tough to call a winner. Doyle and Hancock going head-to-head -head in the final. That's going to be terrific. But the way Greg Hancock made that start in semi-final, number two out of gate two, was terrific, wasn't it? Really was a master class in starting once again. Yep, brilliant. So... Um... We await the news from the final. So uh, it's coming very soon. Let's get the light up for the final now then with Steve Brandon in the pits. Thanks again, Nigel. Yeah, we're just waiting for the Grand Master, Greg Hancock, to join the three riders there here already. Nils Christian Evers left second choice for the final. Jason Doyle, who looked unbeatable until two rides ago, he'll have third pick, and Bartosz Marzik was the last pick. So Greg Hancock's going to come in, and uh, as Greg comes around the corner, we'll just uh, stop him, stop him, stopping him, keep him coming straight forward to make his pick for semi final uh, for the final of this Grand Prix. So Greg's going to come forward now and make that choice. With no surprise if he's not in. Oh, he's going to go off gate one in white. He is full of surprises. Gate one in red, sorry. He's full of surprises this evening. Uh, Niels Christian Evers comes up next. Gate two in blue. Jason Doyle with third choice in the final. He's got the yellow race jacket on. He's going to take gate four in yellow. And Bartosz Smarslik, who has no choice, but he'll come and pick it up anyway. He's going to pick up the white helmet. So uh, just a quick recap and look at the final draw for the uh, 2016 German FIM Speedway Grand Prix. Greg Hank will go in red. Niels Christian Evenson in blue. Bartosz Smarslik in white. And Jason Doyle in yellow. Super lineup for Just the final. <laughs> Terrific with the top two in the world going head to head, Nides. That's uh, mouth watering in itself. Um, Hancock keeping us guessing by uh, changing his decision there. Doesn't go for gate two in the final. He goes for the inside gate. Not quite sure what the, the thought process is there, but um, probably didn't want to give Doyle the inside gate in truth because he knows Doyle is such a. He's done so much confidence and didn't want him alongside him. Yeah, well. This is remarkable because it's Jason Doyle's seventh Grand Prix final in 20 GPs. It's one every three GPs that Doyle makes the final. It's Outstanding. Pretty impressive stat, that, for sure. And Bartosz Marslik as well. 
It's only his 13th Grand Prix and his sixth appearance in a Grand Prix final. Absolutely magnificent. Yeah, they've been a credit to the Grand Prix series, uh, the two young Poles coming in this year with Pavlitsky and Smarslik riding so well. And Smarslik, uh, who is a strong rider, won a Grand Prix, of course, at his home track. And it's more than capable, and it won't be too much longer before he uh, wins another Grand Prix. Terrific, uh, terrific lineup. Well, we can get the reaction of Ty Woffenden now, the reigning champion. He's with Steve Brandon. Ten, Ty, another 10 points tonight, but a little frustrated, I sense. Oh, yeah, for sure, you know, we'd like to have more points than 10, but, um, yeah, you know, to, to make the semis is pretty good, and, um, you know, got a point in the semi, it's always worse when you don't get any points out of the semi, but, um, yeah, all in all, 10 points. Adding to that, but, uh, we adding to that championship, the total, but, um, yeah, we've got a bit of stuff to work on, so we'll, um, we'll take what, what we've learned from today and move forward. Nice recovery. Um, just looking at the week you've had with the thumb, has that hampered you at all tonight? That's not ideal, but, um, you know, I'm in pain, but it is what it is, it's a world championship. Who's your money on the last one? Uh, it'd be me if I was in it, but I'm not, so I can't bet on anyone else. I want Thank you, sir. Yeah, well, it's disappointing. I think he's put a brave face on there. Um, I just yeah. I just sense that it uh, hasn't been ideal preparation with the thumb injury and the ligament damage he has in his hand. Um, uh, badly swollen at the beginning of the week, and it, he's a little uncomfortable, but he can just sense. I bet he's going to go home. He can maybe feel the championship slipping away a little bit, particularly when he sees the top two men in the world right now in the final, and they're going to pull away from him. So, yeah, not ideal for, for Ty. Yep, the riders preparing then. Here we see with Greg Hancock now 12 clear of Ty Woffenden, and there's three rounds to go after tonight. So mm. it's a lot to pull back over three rounds. Yeah. And, and Greg can even win this and go 15 clear of Woffenden. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, then, you know, Ty Woffenden, the world champion, will be under immense pressure. And so he'll be hoping that Greg doesn't get too much out of this final. But... Um, uh, that's out of his uh, control. Schmarslik there, delighted to be in the final. He's uh, in the white helmet colour. But it's been a great night of Speedway, and we've got the important race to come. The final is coming up very soon. So there we have the uh, standings then going into this final. Really uh, looking forward to it. It is a fantastic lineup. And Jason Doyle has gone back to the setup that got him four straight wins. Why did he change it? Well, I was a little surprised when he was saying in the interview that they just wanted to try a couple of things, but they quite clearly backfired because his speed uh, deserted him and uh, he's dropped points subsequently. So, yeah, I can understand why he's gone back to the original setup when he was unbeaten. Hancock has ridden supremely well. Delighted to see Everson back on top form. Yeah, me too. And making the final. That's a great effort from him after such a tough start. And such a tough season. It's, uh, it's fully deserved because he's a, he's a never-say-die character, isn't he? He always gives his best. And Smarslik has been entertaining. Great lineup for the final tonight. And... Uh, Tetero, where well, they've done themselves proud, really. I think there's one or two areas they could improve on, but for their first Grand Prix here, it's been terrific. Really has been a great night of Speedway so far. And we've got the all important final to come. It's a great lineup, and it's coming very, very soon. Here we go with the final then, here in Tetero. Greg Hancock going off the inside. Can the old master get a 22nd GP win in his 199th Grand Prix appearance? Niels Christian Everson goes off gate two. Bartos Smarslik gate three. Jason Doyle going off the outside. Tough one to call this. You have to fancy Hancock off the inside gate. What can the other three do against the old master? Well, you're right, and uh, he went off gate two and made a beauty start in semi-final two, but has now elected to go off the inside gate, and uh, maybe that's because they haven't done any track grading in the semi-finals or before the final. Possibly the dirt is very, very wide, and uh, he's going to creep around the inside. Everson's ridden well. Doyle, what can he come up with? We've seen some terrific performances from him. He's been riding supremely well when he won the Grand Prix last time out. 
The race was extraordinary. He and Ty Woofenden put on a terrific show, passing each other on numerous occasions. Settling down, the gardening's been done. The big final about to come up. The grand final here in Chicago. The first ever Grand Prix. Trying to get a drop on Greg Hancock. Down the back straight, Bartosz Marsnik. What a ride. Here comes Doyle around the outside now. Jason Doyle tries the outside run. Here we go, down the back straight. Marsnik oh, closes the door. Rocky. Just about in on through. Here comes Doyle. Oh, my goodness. It's got off all over again. Fabulous opening lap. The best opening lap of the night. Jason Doyle just will not be denied right now. Control, but Doyle found the set-up. What a move. They've gone back to the winning set-up, and they're winning the final. Hancock back in third. That's ideal for Doyle. Doyle will close in the championship chase with Everson out the back. But Jason Doyle going on to win his third Grand Prix of the season. What a rider. Can you believe it? Jason Doyle, the man of the moment. Four wins earlier, and now he is going to win the German Grand Prix. Jason Doyle does it again. Schmarslick second, and third place went to the line with Everson and Hancock. That was simply stunning. The final belongs to Jason Doyle. Well, we've had another grand stand finish tonight, that's for sure. Doyle coming up with a sudden, stunning ride there. Dropped some points in his last ride. Semi-final also came through in second place, but they made the changes to the equipment, went back to the winning formula, and there's no doubt it proved to be the correct decision. Become, he came up with such a strong ride there. Charged around the outside to get to the front. What a move. Hancock ends up back in third. Slightly disappointing, I would suggest. But nonetheless, a whole hat full of points and retains the lead in the championship. But now, Doyle winning Grand Prix for fun. Consecutive Grand Prix victories, Nigel. He is the man on the mission. The result, what a result for Jason Doyle. Jason Doyle, the winner. Bartosz Marsnik second. Greg Hancock third. And Niels Christian Everson at the back on that occasion. But what a performance from Jason Doyle. He did a wonderful job there. Yeah. There's an Australian flag on the back straight and that really was something a little bit special Kel. Yeah we've been waiting for it and we certainly got it in spades in the final from Doyle. Doyle is just producing these extraordinary displays on the bike. Really is coming up with fabulous performances that is just that little bit better than everybody else right now. Here we see it again. Hancock made a decent start and Schmarslick there was right alongside him out of gate three. And Schmarslick hits the front down the back straight. Doyle didn't get there from the outside. Once again from the tapes, we're looking, uh, we're focusing on the riders on the inside. Look at Doyle. Doyle didn't get away at all very well. Commits himself to the outside. No track grading in the last three races. And here it comes. Roaring around the outside, passes two riders pretty much in one straight. Charging to the dirt, Smarslick can't stop it. And from that moment on, the final was Jason Doyle's. He clears off out in front. What an effort it was. The race of the night, quite comfortably. And to do it when it really matters again is quite extraordinary. He does look like a potential world champion for me right now, Nigel. Oh, stunning. But Greg Hancock still does it when it matters most. Not there in the final on that occasion, but at times when he was under pressure, made the start and made that one stunning pass on uh, Nicky Pedersen as well. Um, oh, so had Hancock has had a great night. Yeah, can't deny that. And he's hanging in there. He's just hanging on to the championship lead. And that's to his eternal credit when you consider the form of Jason Doyle. Smarslick is delighted. He's enjoyed a super night of speedway as well, picking up the second place. Looked like a winner there just momentarily. But uh, Doyle had other ideas. What a ride from Doyle. OK, we can now hear from the winner, Jason Doyle. He's with our man, Steve Brandon. Get the man of the moment. Jason Doyle, if you could step forward, sir. Um, another wow couple of laps there, or one lap in particular. Great job in the final. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to watch that back on the field, mate. That was, uh, I knew I had a bit of a job to do off game four. Uh, 
It come down to the base, there were some rocks there and I thought it's going to work, but just missed it, but when I went off to the outside, you killed some speed up and yeah, it was just got through on um, Bartos, so it, it was a great race. Long way to go in the championship with three rounds left, but another point, another couple of points to pick back. Yeah, that's it, we've got still got three more rounds, I keep saying that, but just enjoying the race and, and uh, to win another Grand Prix, eh? unbelievable. You made some changes before the semi, I'm sure you went back to what you had earlier for the final. Yeah, me thinking of a bike uh, was a little bit stupid idea because I uh, undergeared it and uh, when I missed the start I didn't have enough speed to, to pass and uh, that's, that's what racing is, I just need to do that in the semi and yeah, look what happened in the final. Young American guys photobombing this, but it's your, it's your moment. Just uh, what, is, what does that mean, two back-to-back -back Grand Prix wins or a back-to-back -back Grand Prix win? Mate, he told me five years ago I'd win a Grand Prix. I was sitting in the hospital with a dislocated shoulder and uh, now I've won two Grand Prix, three Grand Prix in one year. It's, uh, it's amazing. Well deserved, Jason Doyle, many congratulations to him, he makes a valid point, he missed the playoffs um, in the UK because of a broken bone in his neck, what, four years ago, um, and uh, here he is now winning his third Grand Prix of the year, it's quite a story. Indeed it is, we see the championship, just the five points between Doyle and Hancock now, Wolfenden has dropped back on 96, Smileslick 88, moving into fourth with Holder just slipping down the table into fifth. Janowski sort of marking time, Pavlitsky on seven. And uh, Antonio Limbach on 70 points has uh, slipped back. And Nicky Pedersen would have been looking for more. He's uh, slipped back as well. But the night belongs to Jason Doyle. What a night it is. It really is quite, quite uh, spectacular, you know. And uh, there's no doubt... He is fully deserves to win. Stunning ride in the final. Two Grand Prix victories back to back. One earlier in Prague when he got the better of Hancock. Gets the better of Hancock here this evening. Stunning display in Gorshoff two weeks ago. This man is riding out of his skin right now and probably can't quite believe it, but uh, he's on a march. Keep your eyes on Doyle because right now he is the man. Well, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant from Jason Doyle. And uh, a third Grand Prix win of the year. And in with a real shout of becoming world champion as well. Absolutely fantastic. Second in the world championship table. And the way he's done it, Nigel, he hasn't done it just by making starts, OK? He, he, you know, he had 12 points out of 12, but he had to do it through the traffic at times and again the last two Grand Prix victories in the finals have been fantastic performances he's had to pass people to do it he really has put himself out there outside the comfort zone Smarslik has ridden great tonight that's a super result for him he's chuffed to bits with that and rightly so a young man really with a massive future ahead of him there's no doubt about that Hancock great job from him back in third hanging on to that five-point lead in the championship but Jason Doyle what can we say here we are trophy time champagne time about to happen and another extraordinary performance from the Australian just really can't, can't believe how he's just taken another step forward Kelvin it was only a couple of years or so we saw him emerge in the World Cup with Australia yeah um, then he came onto the Grand Prix scene and look at him now he's just literally just taking it in his stride he focuses on the job he's in great shape staying out of trouble riding out of his skin and uh, winning Grand Prix now three this season that is outstanding 
And uh, Jason Doyle looks like he's going to be a tough man to slow down right now. Hancock is doing remarkably well to keep him at bay. But a fabulous night, terrific Grand Prix. And Jason Doyle will remember this one again for a long time. It's been a, it's been a great, great season so far for him. Yep, very much so. Who's going to win the world title now? My goodness. It's, uh, it's going to Melbourne, you feel. The Etihad Stadium. And uh, looking forward to that. So it uh, should be a tremendous way. And here's the selfie, the traditional selfie that I think gets used all over social media these days. It didn't happen in my day, that, you know? <laughs> no, I didn't, didn't think it did. It happen in my day. It was black and white, wasn't it? It was indeed, yeah. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, it's great. You know, it's difficult to keep describing Jason Doyle. You know, uh, the adjectives, you just kind of run out of them. But um, you know, we've had the champagne moments, super moments, big smiles all around. Big is probably one of the uh, busiest men in World Speedway. Been uh, a great night for him again. And the championship between Hancock and Doyle is looking really sharp. So, good stuff. Kelvin, um, an emotional return to Tetero? Absolutely. It's been a fabulous weekend. The weather's been brilliant. Super to see the track again, the grass track. And uh, Tetero's done itself proud with a really good Grand Prix tonight. Enjoy your company, Kelvin. We'll see you in Stockholm in a couple of weeks' time. Good work, as always, from the Tetero legend, Kelvin Tatum. Enjoyed his company, as always. We'll see you in a couple of weeks' time in Stockholm. For the first time in the Speedway Grand Prix history, the series came to Tetero in Germany. It was the 200th Grand Prix since the competition started back in 1995. For Greg Hancock, it was his 199th appearance. And what a meeting it was for Hancock. Jason Doyle emerging once again as one of the leading contenders. And Martin Smolinski is the wild card, proving to be a popular choice. He really did get the German flags waving down the back straight, winning his opening ride. Drama early on as Stevenson was excluded for losing control and hitting Freddie Lindgren. They were both fine about it, though. Reigning champion Ty Woffenden knew that he was under pressure just to maintain his uh, real opportunity in the World Championship with Doyle and Hancock continuing their fine form. Jason Doyle went through his first four rides with 12 points. He then made a change of gearing. And that didn't work out because in his fifth ride, he trailed in last. Niels Christian Everson had his best round for quite some time, managed to get into the semi-finals and battle his way through ultimately to the final as well. Good to see. As the meeting went on, though, Doyle right at the top. Wolfenden hanging on in there, managed to qualify for the semi-finals to really just hang on to the coattails of Hancock and Doyle. And at one stage, the race for the title was level on 99 points apiece between Doyle and Hancock. But the old master Hancock continued his good work and did it when it mattered most. Really rode beautifully at times. And the young Poles as well, Pavlitsky and Bartosz Smarslik, turning on the style too. The semi-finals was Doyle, Everton, Holder and Wuffenden in semi-final one, Smarslik, Hancock, Smolinski and Pavlitsky in semi-final two. Smolinski, the wild card, managed to go through on countback because he won two of his five rides to notch seven points. But then into the semi-finals, Doyle, magnificent ride with Niels Christian Everson. They went through second semi-final, Hancock from Smarslik. And then in the final itself, Jason Doyle came from the back for a third Grand Prix win of the season and closes the gap in the title race.